I'm going to read this. Um, welcome, everyone. It's important for Placer County to conduct our business to ensure essential services for our citizens. We're doing everything we can to facilitate residents staying at home and social distancing. We encourage the public to engage in the process. With that in mind, our public comment for this meeting will be offered through a completely remote virtual process. Just a minute. You didn't call roll yet. I better let you do that. Sorry. All right. Good morning. Uh, could I have uh, an acknowledgement from Mr. Cannon, please? Present. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Moss? Here. Mr. Nader? Here. Mr. Herzog? Here. Mr. Sevison? Here. And Mr. Hauge? Here. Thank you. All right. So let me continue then. Thank you, Sue. Uh, citizens who wish to comment today that did not call the reservation line prior to the start of the meeting should be prepared to use the Zoom platform. You may join virtually online by clicking on the link on the Planning Commission homepage. Please make sure your microphone is muted. You may also call us using our toll-free numbers to hear the meeting at 888-788-0099 or 877-877. 8532247 let me say that again 8778535247 and please enter the webinar id number 9410978 then please press 6 to mute yourself on your phone if you would like to make public comment virtually please raise your hand with your hand icon at the bottom of the page on your computer if you are calling in, please press 9, I'm sorry, star 9, to raise your hand. Please be prepared to speak at the time when I open public comment for the specific item you would like to address, which may include public comment for matters not included on the agenda, a consent item, or a timed item. Each commenter is um, entitled to three minutes to comment time. Thank you for your patience as we work to preserve the safety and health of all meeting participants and ensure that each citizen who wishes to comment has the opportunity to do so. So at this time, uh, the chair asks for the uh, planning director's report. All right, good morning, chairman and members of the commission. E.J. Valdi with the Planning Services Division. Uh, I was hoping today that I'd be able to report out on Tuesday's board meeting and what happened with the Placer County Conservation Plan, but as you most of you probably heard we had some technology issues uh, with Zoom, and so uh, all items uh, have been continued. So uh, I don't believe any action was taken at uh, Tuesday's meeting, right, Clayton? Right. Consent items. Consent items. So anyway, so uh, <coughs> those items are going to be, uh, they were either continued to September 1st, or I think there's also going to be a meeting on September 8th. Uh, planning is, you know, bringing forward. I think there's three different appeals that are going to the board. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll have those heard on September 1st. Uh, for planning commission meetings, uh, our next meeting is going to be September 10th. Uh, we have uh, one appeal item on that agenda, uh, so fairly light. And then uh, September 24th, uh, there'll be several items, so you won't get out of there quite as quick that day. Uh, other than that, that's all I have to report for now. All right, thank you. Okay, can I ask a question? Uh, is the uh, Hidden Falls expansion still a possibility for the 23rd of September? As far as I know, I believe it's still a possibility. Yes. But um, the final EIR has not yet been released, and they're still working on the final EIR. So that obviously will drive the timeline. Thank you. Any other questions of the commissioners or the planning director? I was, wondering, I was wondering what the status of that uh, winery down in, in Granite Bay is. Yeah, so that's the Sarah Winery in Granite Bay. That is one of the appeals that the board's going to be considered. It's uh, scheduled for September 1st, and right now I think that's on schedule. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh -huh. okay. All right. 
I will now open public comment for any matters not on the Planning Commission agenda, and we will wait for calls to come through. Oh, you need to uh, please raise your hand uh, either on the phone by pound pressing star 9 or by your computer. There is a uh, hand to be raised at the bottom and, and push that button. Uh, Mr. Chairman, while we're waiting, may I ask a clarif clarifying question from Council? Yes. Okay. Uh, just a question. I, I We recognize an error from uh, the minutes from last meeting. Do we need to pull that from consent to be able to make adjustments or what? Or right. Can we so once we move to consent, uh, we will pull the item and uh, either EJ or I will read in the proposed changes okay. uh, prior to the motion. Okay, thanks. Has anyone requested to speak? Okay. Uh, with no uh, callers for the public comment uh, for matters not on the agenda, it is now closed. We will now move to the consent calendar agenda. Would any of the commissioners like to remove the one item? Uh, and there is only one item from the consent calendar agenda. And also, if there's anyone uh, from the public who would like to speak, uh, raise your hand now. So let's start with the commissioners. I believe you wanted to pull an item. Yeah, I think we'll pull the minutes from the consent agenda item. All right. And does anyone raise their hand to speak on this item? All right. Uh, with that, let's. Uh, we have the. Uh, so now's the time to take up the uh, minutes. Yes, uh, Chairman. So I'll uh, take that on uh, August 13th action agenda. Uh, there is a correction that needs to be made under timed item uh, number one, which was a Saber City Estate subdivision. Uh, there were a total of four actions, uh, and so actions two, three, and four. Uh, there needs to be a correction in the first and second. Uh, so, action number the second action, Commissioner Nader moved. It's, it states Commissioner Herzog seconded. Commissioner Herzog was absent at that meeting. Uh, so, we need to replace that with Commissioner Cannon seconded. That same change will be for the third motion and also the fourth motion. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, there. Uh, then, accept the motion. A second it. No, no, I have nobody's first made a first motion yet. Huh? So I, I will accept a motion if somebody wants to approve the minutes as corrected. I'll approve the minutes as corrected. Okay. And a second. second. We have a first and a second, Sue. Would you call roll? I have a first by Mr. Johnson, a second by Mr. Nader. So a vote for Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Moss? Abstain. Mr. Nader? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Abstain. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay, we are moving on to our timed item, which is a third party appeal of the zoning administrator's approval of a minor use permit to allow the Katuna residential care home. Members of the public may now raise their hands, press pound or star nine if you're calling in, to begin queuing in for public comment on this item which will not begin until the item presentation is complete. Uh, Delaney uh, Fernham is going to be presenting this item. So Delaney, what's that? Oh. It's social distancing somewhere over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. What's that? I know. Oh. All right. Good morning, Good Mr. Morning. Chairman, members of the Commission. I'm Delaney Farnham with the Planning Services. Today we have a third party appeal of the Zoning Administrator's approval of the Katuna Residential Care Home Minor Use Permit. So the project is located at 6505 Arabian Circle in Granite Bay. It's in between Barton Road and Auburn Folsom Road along the Douglas Boulevard corridor. 
The property is zoned RAB100, which is residential agriculture, combining minimum build site of 100,000 square feet. It is designated rural residential 2.3 to 4.6 acre minimum in the Granite Bay Community Plan. So just to give you a little reference on where this is located, the project is bounded to the north by Douglas Boulevard. Just north of that is the Stratford Down subdivision. Uh, directly west is Arabian Circle and then the Granite Bay Veterinarian Clinic. To the south and east are existing single-family residential homes. The parcel is generally square in shape with gradual slopes from south to north uh, surrounding land uses along the Douglas Boulevard corridor include, um, starting from west to east, we have the Escaton Lodge and Country House Residence. These are some other residential care homes. We also have Granite Bay Community Park, a commercial professional center, the Creative Arts and Music Center. North of Douglas, we have a Lutheran church, the Granite Bay Library. As I mentioned, there's the Granite Bay Veterinary Clinic directly west. Um, Farther down east, we have Dick's Taxidermy, and then on the corner, we have a Country Gables Shopping Center. So the, the applicant is requesting approval of a minor use permit for the operation of a residential care home serving up to 15 residents. The 1.9 acre parcel has an existing 2,171 square foot home with an attached garage, a detached 1,656 square foot barn, as well as an in-ground pool. The applicant proposes to construct a 10,400 square foot addition to the existing residence for use as a residential care home. The care home would include private rooms, a common kitchen, living room, dining room, a media library room, laundry room, administrative office, and an outdoor courtyard. <coughs> Operation of the residential care home consists of a small staff of five to seven employees providing a 24-hour non-medical care for up to 15 clients, um, many with dementia. The uh, care and supervision provided on-site would include assistance with dressing, grooming, personal hygiene, assistance with self-administered medications, and monitoring of food intake and special dietary needs. The residential care home would provide programs and activities to meet social, emotional, and physical needs of the clients and the existing single family dwelling will also be occupied by the owner's operators and be used as a single family dwelling. So the site plan here, I just wanna point out, we have the existing house, existing pool, existing barn. The new addition is attached via the garage and it includes this area with a courtyard in the middle. We also have improvements to the driveway, expanding the circular driveway and adding parking. So to get into some of the offsite improvements, um, improvements would occur at the Arabian Circle Douglas Boulevard intersection, which will improve driver visibility onto Douglas Boulevard and vehicle transitions at this intersection. Arabian Circle will be widened from 14 feet to 20 feet with two foot wide shoulders, starting from Douglas Boulevard and the improvements would continue <coughs> down to the southern property line of the, of the property. Access uh, to this property is off of Arabian Circle. The proposed driveway improvements include a one-way circular driveway, which will vary in width, but with a minimum width of 14 feet. The circulation provides access um, to the front door of the new proposed structure. It's a covered uh, porch, and it also has a provision to bypass that, so we can have two options, one to go underneath and one to bypass the covered option. Um, on-site parking is provided for up to eight spaces, so we have spaces here as well as two ADA spaces on-site. The residential care home addition would have a separate main entrance and be attached via the garage of the existing single-family dwelling. Uh, the proposed improvements to the driveway does meet our emergency vehicle access, so we do have a turning radius that meets our emergency vehicle access requirement. So at the May 21st Zoning Administrator hearing, correspondence was received prior to the hearing and we had 12 public commenters. Concerns were made regarding the compatibility of the use, change in character of the neighborhood, road improvements, intersection, safety, and decrease in neighborhood property value. <coughs> During public comment, the Zoning Administrator discussed several of these issues that were brought up by the public. 
One topic of discussion was the amount of on-site parking available. So although this uh, project meets our zoning ordinance parking standard, um, the need for additional overflow parking was identified by the zoning administrator. As a result, he added the condition number 47, which prohibits off-site parking and um, adds on an additional overflow parking for up to seven vehicles. Another concern brought up was the potential safety issue of uh, future residents walking, exercising, or wandering onto Arabian Circle due to the fact that there's no pedestrian sidewalks available. To address this concern, the zoning administrator added condition number 48, uh, which restricts the residents from exercising or using Arabian Circle. So all their um, physical activities would occur on site. After listening to public testimony and the discussion, the zoning administrator took action to adopt the mitigated negative declaration and approve the applicant's request for a minor use permit uh, with the added conditions to allow for the construction and operation of the Katuna Residential Care Home. A third-party appeal was filed on June 1st by John Peterson, which is representing 24 other resident petitioners. The appeal letter raised several issues concerning inconsistency with the Granite Bay Community Plan and incompatible use with the neighborhood, inadequate findings for a minor use permit, uh, concerns with traffic impacts and safety, an overburdening of fire emergency resources, concerns with changes to the aesthetics, a noise impact from the operation of the home, and they've also requested a few changes of conditions of approval. And the final item was perceived procedural and Brown Act violations during the review process. So I'll go into some of these points here. Uh, the appellants assert that the proposed residential care home is inconsistent with the Granite Bay Community Plan policy goals and the design elements. The care home property is designated rural residential and, and is also zoned RAB100. So residential care homes are an allowed use in the RA zone district with approval of a minor use permit. The development standards in the RA's B100 zone district require a minimum front setback of 75 feet from center line of traveled way along Arabian Circle, uh, requires a minimum side setback of, which would be on the east and south line of 30 feet to property line, and a maximum height of 36 feet. In the Granite Bay Community Plan, the minimum front setback along Douglas Boulevard is identified as 75 feet from the 70-foot right-of-way. Allowable site coverage in the zone district is 35%. The existing structure, along with the proposed addition, would bring approximately 17% site coverage on this property. The proposed addition meets both the RA zone setback and development standards, as well as a Granite Bay Community Plan setback requirement along Douglas. The proposed project would be consistent with the policies and objectives of the general plan, including provisions of special need housing. The zoning administrator determined that the proposed project would be consistent with community plan goals and policies that provide for orderly growth and development for a variety of development and diversity of housing choices that can support a full range of lifestyles in the community. The proposed project is consistent with surrounding uses along the Douglas Boulevard corridor, being that there are residential and commercial development um, through that section. It has, uh, the project has been designed to look residential in nature to integrate cohesively with the adjacent uh, development and in a manner that minimizes the impacts of surrounding properties through provisions that include um, high quality architectural elements and materials that are compatible with the adjacent properties. The appellants also assert that there are too many residential care homes in Granite Bay. In the past two decades, a number of different types of care homes have been approved in the Granite Bay area. These facilities address and serve a variety of needs in the community, including aging population, dementia care, extended congregate care, skilled nursing, and assisted living care. This project is located off of Douglas Boulevard, which is a main arterial road in Granite Bay, and is of size and scale that would be compatible within the existing neighborhood. As a care home, this project provides a mix of housing opportunities for residents in Granite Bay by providing opportunity for family members to continue to live within the community. 
So moving on to some of the traffic road safety concerns. The appellants em emphasize that the proposed improvements do not resolve the hazardous Douglas Boulevard Arabian Circle intersection. Improvements that are required at this intersection include increasing the size of the Douglas Boulevard taper by grading the existing bank back by two to 10 feet. So that's on both sides. We have uh, grading the tapers back about 10 feet and two to 10 feet on this side as well. This improvement will improve the driver visibility both entering and exiting Arabian Circle. Um, and this slide here, I'll kind of explain. If a driver is entering Douglas Boulevard, the solid red line shows the driver's sight line um, going to Arabian Circle. So you have a, a vehicle coming from Douglas. They have a pretty short distance at the current condition to see if a car, it's sort of a blind corner. Uh, the dash red line shows a vehicle stopped on Arabian Circle going on to Douglas. They have a pretty short uh, sight line distance to oncoming traffic to pull out. With the proposed improvements, um, in yellow, the solid line would show you a vehicle coming on Douglas. They would have more visibility to turn on to Arabian Circle. And if the vehicle was entering Douglas with the new improvements, they'll have a much longer range of visibility looking down on Douglas of oncoming traffic. Delaney, can I ask about that? Sure. Uh, when you say a range of two to 10 feet, is that two feet, because it's a sloping bank that's mm -hmm. there, is it two feet at the base and up to 10 feet at the top to give more of an opening for a uh, view? Is that the reason for the range? The range is um, because of the curve here. So we have maybe two feet on this side. And as you get closer, um, sort of in the middle there, we're going to have almost right. 10 feet of grading. We're also going to be improving that bank. You can kind of see the grading lines here. Um, but yeah, the two to 10 feet is the existing bank is being cut back that far. The slope is going to be, there'll be more of a slope. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So residents also expressed concerns regarding vehicle turning movements at this intersection because Dover Drive is just uh, offset Arabian Circle on the north side of Douglas. Uh, currently, our Department of Public Works is preparing a Highway Safety Improvement Program grant application, which is geared to make safety improvements on the Douglas Boulevard corridor. Um, Arabian Circle is within the study area for the safety project. However, the specifics, if any, have not been determined at this point. Uh, DPW does monitor traffic collisions um, on an annual basis. Um, using their traffic accident analysis system. Originally at the zoning administrator hearing, staff reported that there were no collisions at this intersection um, over the last three years. Uh, we've gained updated information from the CHP, which does indicate a single collision at the Douglas Boulevard Arabian Circle intersection. However, it should be noted that this uh, reported collision was due to a driver medical emergency and not a result of traffic or road safety issue. Um, the other item about the road is the appellant's question that Katuna is having the right to use Arabian Circle, a private residential street, for entry of the residential care home. Uh, creating an alternate entry from Douglas Boulevard would have created a safety issue at this existing intersection. So if we were to put another entry right off of Douglas, it would have exacerbated a hazardous problem. Uh, the Katunas do have legal access to their property from Arabian Circle, which is a 50-foot wide road and utility easement. This is an allowed use on the property with approval of a minor use permit. And Arabian Circle is a privately maintained road um, and it's going to be improved to meet the county's private road uh, standards for access. So we are improving this 14-foot road to now a 20-foot road with two-foot shoulders. Uh, there is an existing road maintenance agreement that the project site is subject to for future road maintenance. As a part of the road maintenance agreement, the project will be required to contribute their fair share towards the maintenance of the private road. So to clarify, this staff is proposing to add a condition. Um, this would be condition number 49, which acknowledges the participation in the road maintenance agreement. And I can read that in now if you'd like or later. Okay. Condition, proposed condition 49, the property owners must pay project fair share to maintain the private road Arabian Circle, either through road maintenance agreement or a similar shared payment mechanism. 
So going into the aesthetics, the appellants draw comparisons with um, Elam Glen Care Home, and, a, and they are concerned with the project creating blight in their neighborhood. Uh, views to or from the project site are short range and limited to travelers on Douglas Boulevard and Arabian Circle. Current views of the project site include in the existing single family dwelling, the barn, driveway, and fallow pasture land. Existing landscaping amateur trees are to remain on site. Ground level views from the neighboring properties to the east and south are limited due to the existing vegetation. A wider view of the project site is from Douglas Boulevard and Arabian Circle, though the views are partially obstructed by the mature trees and existing fencing. The project will use a craftsman style village architecture, uh, which, which will um, be consistent with the Granite Bay Community Plan, and the facility is going to be designed with landscaping around the structure and perimeter of the site, which will provide screening and a buffer from surrounding parcels. The proposed landscape plan includes a wide variety of plant material and would greatly improve the aesthetic of the existing property, which would also soften the views of the proposed development. Given the visual character of the existing site, the proposed project will not degrade the visual character or quality of the site and its surroundings. I'll just point out, it's kind of hard to see, the areas that are not colored in are existing mature vegetation, so we have that surrounding um, most sides of the property. The area in color is a proposed uh, addition landscape plan, so we do have existing trees here. They're going to be filling in uh, throughout the property and around the, the building. Another item of concern regarding aesthetics is the lighting of the project. The project is specifically conditioned to comply with the Granite Bay Community Plan lighting design, which will be reviewed and approved during improvement plans. Condition 19 and 21 provide lighting requirements, which include shielding and downward directional lighting, DRC approval of all lighting fixtures, and restriction of glare to, to any pedestrian or vehicle traffic. So touching on some of the additional appeal points, the appellants proclaim inadequate findings were made for a minor use permit. They argue that the project is detrimental to the health, safety, peace, and comfort and general welfare of the local residents and to their property, um, mainly citing impacts from the traffic safety and quality of life. There are specific conditions of approval that are in place which require the road safety improvements, including the sufficient emergency vehicle access and turnaround on site. The residential care home operates and functions with low impact of traffic and is fully contained on site. These improvements and conditions ensure that the findings will be adequately met to protect the general welfare and of the people and residing or working in this neighborhood. The appellants argue that the density of the development is incompatible with the existing neighborhood due to the size of the structure, visibility from the road, and, not, and the use not being well suited for the existing rural equestrian lifestyle. Staff has reviewed the project for consistency with the character of the immediate neighborhood and found that the use is compatible with development along that Douglas Boulevard corridor and that the very large residential development is common practice in Granite Bay. The appellants contest that the proposed use will exacerbate an unsafe intersection at Arabian Circle and Douglas. The proposed use for the 15-bed care home does not significantly impact traffic due to the likelihood that many, if not all, residents will not drive. In addition, the anticipated increase in traffic will be from employees and deliveries and visitors, which is less than significant. For comparison, this project is approximately uh, 30 average daily trips compared to a single-family dwelling with 10 average daily trips. Staff has conditioned the project to make off-site improvements, including intersection improvements, um, for the safety and well-being of the neighborhood. Another item of concern is the overburdening of fire emergency resources. Um, the anticipated increase in population from this project is minimal. Um, however, it, it is reasonable to expect that emergency calls would be generated by the use. However, the increased demands on the fire and police service have been previously anticipated as part of the Granite Bay Community Plan build-out and are met with the impact fees that provide funding for the incremental expansion of services. South Placer Fire District has reviewed this project and has also provided their temporary will-serve letter. No additional fire personnel or equipment would be necessary to serve this project. 
The other item of concern is noise impacts due to the operation of the use. Um, in general, the noise generated by the project, uh, the appellant suggests that fire alarms and security alarms would be a nuisance to the neighborhood. Once operating, noise would result from activities associated with things such as parking, doors closing, uh, standard landscaping maintenance activities, and delivery of good and, goods and services to the facility. All these activities are emit intermittent sources of low-level noise and are not expected to cause a perceptible noise increase. The noise levels are typical of the residential environment and would not exceed any established noise standards. The use of security and fire alarms is a temporary and intermittent noise that is typically found in residential areas and also provides safety to the residents of the care home. Additionally, this project is subject to the Placer County Noise Ordinance. Um, the next item was the requested changes to conditions of approval. The appellant's request to add a condition that limits the Tuna Residential Care Home to only care for dementia patients. The care home is not limited to caring strictly for dementia patients, and additional state licensing is required for them to serve that specific population. The county zoning ordinance does not stipulate the type of patients to be served or cared for in the residential care home, and the licensing requirements from the residential care home would occur at a state level. Um, in, in regards to the other addition that they're requesting would be the uh, uh, parking on site. So eight on site parking spaces are uh, proposed, which meets our parking standard. However, as I mentioned earlier, the zoning administrator did add the condition for overflow parking for up to seven vehicles. In this condition, he specifically said this area does not need to be paved. Um, the appellants contest that this condition will create noise and dust and request that the overflow parking be paved. However, due to the temporary nature of the overflow parking, the zoning administrator did not require paving of this parking area. So and, could I ask a question about that? Yeah. Uh, going back to the map. Sure. Let me see. Do we, uh, have we identified where the uh, overflow parking is going to be on the map? It has not been identified on the map during the zoning administrator hearing. The Katunas did verbally confirm that there is ample space on site for that gravel parking. One suggested area was um, over here by the barn, that there would be ample overflow parking to the back of the property. However, um, with the open areas around, there would be sufficient room. And we can work with them during improvement plans to find the, the best place for that overflow parking. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'll just go ahead and address the procedural and Brown Act violations that were perceived by the appellants. Um, they stated that they've contacted the county numerous times during COVID-19 to request public hearings be postponed until the public can once again participate in person. Um, we did provide an additional two weeks for public review of the M&D due to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Placer County has maintained its commitment to provide public participation during the public review process in a manner that is consistent with guidance provided by the County Public Health Officer as well as Governor Newsom's executive orders. Placer County has taken the steps to utilize technology to encourage full but remote pu public participation. Um, and then before I get to my recommendation, I will say we did receive a comment letter late last night the letter um, is a neighboring parcel that is directly uh, east of the project site, and they were concerned that they were not received any noticing of the project. We did check our, our mailing notice. That address was mailed and noticed. However, change of ownership has occurred in the recent months, so there may be an error with the, um, the noticing getting directed to an old um, homeowner. So. Property sale has occurred in I think, June 2020, so we did mail it to the address, but it was not directed to the new property owner. Uh, Delaney, on that, the surrounding properties were all notified because the letter suggested that maybe nobody was notified yes, in there. Yes, I will clarify. So this project has been noticed during the M&D process for a 30-day public review, which we then again added two weeks. It's been noticed for the zoning administrator hearing. It's now been noticed for the Planning Commission appeal. We've noticed people within 300 feet. So, 
Um, I will go ahead and move on to our recommendation. The Development Review Committee recommends that the Planning Commission deny the third party appeal, uphold the zoning administrator's approval, and take the following action to adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring program for the Katuna Residential Care Home and approve the minor use permit for the residential care home supported by findings and conditions of approval uh, found in the staff report. Okay. Any questions? I have a question for County Council. Uh, the private road issue and uh, their supposed need to get approval from the residents on that, is there, do you speak to that at all? I mean, that's one of the issues that's been brought up. Sure. Yeah. Um, I would say normally the county doesn't get involved in the private determinations other um, than to verify that, in fact, there is an easement in place and the the applicant does have an easement for access across the road, but uh, to the extent there is some sort of uh, private uh, dispute or concern about whether or not that easement's been overburdened, the county doesn't normally get involved in those. But so we do that, check to make sure, so make that's sure not there really is an a easement. Of ours. Right. Uh, there is a condition in the project approval that indicates um, that they would have to pay their fair share. Um, but in terms of the um, that private land dispute, no, the county would not be involved in it. Thank you. Other questions of the commission? That's the uh, condition 49 that you just mentioned? Correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> you have a question? Okay. So at this time, I think uh, we would like the appellant to make their presentation. Uh, John Peterson. So is that something you do, Sue, or is that something that Jeremy has? Okay. Right on. This there is we go. John Peterson. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I'm up. You're up. Okay. Thanks for having me. Uh, dear members of the Placer County Planning Commission, uh, thanks for taking your time to hear our appeal of the Zoning Administrator's May 21 2020 decision to approve the Katuna Residential Care Home located at 6505 Arabian Circle. My name is John Peterson. I've lived at 8787 Palomino Court in Granite Bay, which is a spur off Arabian Circle for over 23 years. Palomino Court's a part of the Arabian Circle neighborhood, and I share the private access road that leads to Douglas Boulevard with 18 other residences along with the Granite Bay Vet Clinic. I'm an attorney and a real estate broker and own a small business here in town. This appeal is being pursued by virtually every homeowner on Arabian Circle and Palomino Court. Not that all of them will be speaking today due to work or other commitments, but I'm representing the neighborhood. Many of them will be speaking utilizing the three minutes allocated to speakers. All of the neighbors will be impacted by your decision here today, as each and every one will drive by the Katuna Care Home daily on the private access road if this project is approved and built. We understand that a MAC meeting is not required in the case of a minor use permit, but it is disappointing that the county proceeded with this project without any neighborhood input until very far along in the process, at which point the applicant had likely spent thousands of dollars. Had community input been heard and the level of opposition recognized, they may have saved themselves much time and money. As you know, the Katuna project proposes to add a 10,400 square foot addition to an existing 2,171 foot square foot residence on a 1.93 acre parcel. The parcel also has a 1,656 square foot detached barn at the rear of the property. This parcel is non-conforming as it's less than 2.3 acres and is actually the smallest parcel amongst the 19 parcels within the neighborhood. Yet the county proposes to allow the construction of an addition which will result in a structure that's 5.8 times larger than the residents that currently exists on the property and over four times larger than the average home size in the neighborhood. In the course of this proceeding, 288 petitioners have registered their opposition to this project, nearly all of them Granite Bay residents. Um, at this point, I wanted to show the zoning map, which is was at page 234 on the staff report. We could put that up. Jeremy's going to do that. Okay. Hold on, we'll get it up. Okay, thank you.
Is that the map you requested? Uh, let's see. It just kind of disappeared from the Planning Commission screen. Um, Jeremy, it, yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yep. Um, I just wanted to raise this uh, map here today just to show what the actual zoning is in our neighborhood. If you look on this map uh, to the right, way down to the east is the red, and that's commercial zoning. That's um, Country Gables, Rayleigh's, et cetera. And uh, that's the only commercial zoning that's really in this area. As you go down to the left, there's some professional office zoning, and there's some uh, you know retail, pool equipment people, and the Country Manor care home. Other than that, everything is residential zoning. Yes, there are some grandfathered businesses that exist here, a church, a public library, the vet clinic, Dick's Taxidermy, all of which are, are really residential uh, businesses, so to speak, other than the vet clinic, and they've been grandfathered here for years. These were all here before I moved in 23 years ago. Uh, there have been a couple additions, um, including three doors down to the west, there's a uh, care home that's been approved, hasn't been built yet. It's going to be vastly larger than this, and uh, it will have its own Douglas Boulevard access, presumably, if it ever gets built. I believe they extended their use permit recently. Um, and all of these alleged commercial businesses have direct access to Douglas Boulevard with the exception of the vet clinic, which I believe was a house before. Um, you can, uh, that's it for the map. You can take that down. Thank you. Um, moving on, uh, I don't need to put up the Katuna site plan because you just saw it. But as you could see from that, this project does not front Douglas Boulevard. Apparently in the process, it was determined it would be too dangerous to put in an entryway on, on Douglas. Instead, it's fronting Arabian Circle, which is our private road. Um, and uh, accordingly, we're having to modify our private road enter, enter, entry to accommodate this, this project. Um, and I think that's critical to my presentation here as we move on. Uh, the primary basis of our appeal is the many and clear and substantive errors in making the required findings for a minor use permit under the Placer County Zoning Ordinance and the Granite Bay Community Plan, which was adopted in 2012. Um, staff are recommending denial of the appeal and approval of the minor use permit, despite all our objections. The standard for a minor use permit approval, uh, where it's required for certain land uses that are generally consistent with the purpose of the zone, but could create problems for adjoining properties, the surrounding area, and the population and their populations, if such uses are not designed to be compatible with surrounding land uses. Um, with respect to our argument that this project is inconsistent with the Granite Bay Community Plan and an incompatible use in the neighborhood, staff has stated that uh, they determined that the pro proposed pro project would be consistent with the community plan goals and policies to provide for orderly growth that accommodates a variety of development and a diversity of housing choices. The proposed project is consistent with surrounding development along the portion of Douglas Boulevard and the character of the area has a mix of residential and commercial development. In addition, the project would comply with county and community plan design guidelines in terms of architectural design, massing, scale, lot orientation, intensity of use, compatibility with adjacent properties and buildings, vehicular circulation and landscaping. It has been designed to integrate cohesively with adjacent development in a manner that minimizes its impacts on the surrounding properties. Be compatible with adjacent properties, the applicant has incorporated site design and architectural features consistent with the design elements outlined in the Granite Bay Community Plan. The preliminary elevations for this project show consistency with the preferred Granite Bay Community Plan craftsman style village architectural design elements that include using natural materials, etc. Based on the design, the proposed landscape buffers, the internal recreation area staff anticipates this project will have little impact to surrounding properties. County staff here, their analysis doesn't work on many, many levels. Um, the the analysis, analysis ignores many pertinent sections of the Granite Bay Community Plan, and I'd like to go through some of these so you know about them. Um, section 1.4 of the plan 
discusses priorities. It states the prevailing goal is to preserve the unique character of Granite Bay. One of the most significant issues for residents is a concern that growth pressures are threatening the quality of life within their community. That section further states that many of these residences are, residents are also opposed to additional commercial development, particularly along Douglas Boulevard. Many residents want to maintain a predominance of large lot single family development with opportunities for animal raising and planning, animal raising and agricultural activities. Planning staff states that the character of the area has a mix of residential and commercial development. This is somewhat true to the extent there is commercial zoning located at the corner of Douglas and Auburn Folsom. There is professional office zoning located to the west near the corner of Douglas and Barton. However, the few projects that do have businesses that are not located in a commercial zone are converted residences which maintain the rural feel, such as Dick's Taxidermy, which is essentially a home occupation, and buildings on that site were never expanded to accommodate the business. Granite Bay Vet Clinic, which predates the community plan and approximates the size of the existing residences on Arabian Circle. The other two in the area are the library and the Lutheran Church, civic buildings which also predate the plan. To say that Douglas Boulevard between Auburn Folsom and Barton is a mix of residential and commercial in order to justify turning a 2171 square foot residence on a residential lot into a 12,571 square foot commercial enterprise is ludicrous. Continuing on with the plan, section 1.6 lists goals. Goal number one, protect and preserve the unique rural character of the community and maintain the identity of Granite Bay as a scenic, tranquil, family-oriented, rural residential community compatible with the area's physical constraints and natural features. This project does not protect or preserve the unique rural character. In fact, it will hasten the loss of the rural residential community. Section six of the plan states, establish and maintain a system of roads to afford safe access to individual properties within the community, permit safe and reasonably convenient travel between parts of the community, direct through traffic away from residential areas to designated routes in order to maintain the community's rural quality and natural environment for public safety, and enhance enjoyment of the scenic rural environment by preserving major roadways as scenic corridors. This project does not permit safe travel and does not direct traffic away from a residential area. Rather, it is allowing the use of a private road for heavy commercial traffic and increasing the already overburdened Douglas Boulevard with yet more traffic. Section seven states, provide safe routes for walking and cycling and equestrian use in rural areas to enable convenient active travel as a part of daily activities. Arabian Circle is an equestrian area with large lots, barns, and dressage facilities. This project will make equestrian use as well as walking and cycling on Arabian Circle or to the commercial areas much more dangerous, contrary to the plan goal. Section 8 of the plan states, commercial, professional, and institutional services and facilities are primarily intended to serve the local residences, residents and should not disrupt the overall character of the area. Section 11 states, encourage healthy, sustainable, and accessible neighborhoods which accommodate a variety of development, attractive streetscapes, walkable pedestrian environments, and accessible open space. Section 12 goes on to say, preserve those areas designated for rural residential and rural estate housing, and we are zoned rural residential that contribute to the character of much of Granite Bay. This project is located in the middle of a rural residential housing development. This project does the exact opposite of preserving the character of the neighborhood. Section 1.7 of the plan goes on to list general community policies. Policy number one, land in the Granite Bay community shall in general be restricted to residential uses, parks and open space areas for watershed protection, air quality protection, scenic enjoyment and recreation, agricultural pursuits and such public, private and commercial uses as are necessary to serve the frequent needs of the community. Section 3.1 states the land use goals, preserve the unique, unique character of the Granite Bay area, which is exemplified by the general rural environment, oak woodlands, mix of land uses and density and high quality of development. Two states require planning and design that ensures compatibility among neighboring land uses. Three, commercial uses should serve local community needs and should not detract from the rural residential setting. Four, help maintain and support agricultural uses such as orchards, hobby farms, vineyards, animal raising, and horse ranches. Five, preserve and protect the natural waterways and watersheds, wetlands, riparian areas, floodlands, and oak woodlands. This project is in direct conflict with the goals and policies above stated. This massive structure will directly disrupt the character of this neighborhood and this project is clearly commercial in nature. 
And given the overbuilding of care facilities, which I'll discuss later, this project likely will have to attract and recruit non-local residences in order to survive. This commercial facility, as stated elsewhere below, should not be located in a residential area. This project will make the neighborhood less accessible and attractive with less open space. Only 1% of the land in Granite Bay is zoned commercial for a reason, because the vast majority of residents want to preserve the rural residential way of life. Section 3.2 of the plan goes on to list policies. Policy four states, retain commercial centers at and adjacent to the intersections of Sierra College Boulevard and Douglas Boulevard and Auburn Folsom Boulevard Road, uh, Auburn Folsom Road and Douglas Boulevard. This project is located out, outside of existing commercial centers and detracts from the existing rural residential neighborhood. The clear intent of the plan is to restrict commercial development other than in zones clearly intended for commercial. Policy six states, provide transitional land uses or a landscape buffer wherever necessary to minimize the conflicts inherited, inherent to adjoining properties of different zoning intensity, density, or adverse uses. This project is an adverse use compared to the existing residential, and the magnitude of the improvements is not compatible with the density of the neighborhood. There will be no buffer between this commercial facility and the neighborhood. This facility is in the heart of the neighborhood. In fact, the project fronts our neighborhood, not Douglas Boulevard, because the county would not allow direct access to Douglas, rather choosing a private road for access to this commercial facility. Policy eight states, the keeping of livestock, particularly horses, one of many important components of the rural character of the community. The Arabian Circle neighborhood has many residents who enjoy various types of livestock and equestrian facilities, which this project will not be compatible with. Policy nine, buildings shall be of a size and scale conducive to the character of the immediate neighborhood. The addition of over 10,000 square feet to a building is not in any way, shape, or form conducive to the character of an existing rural residential community that has existed in harmony for over 40 years and where most residences are less than 3,500 square feet. The community plan explicitly designates Doug Douglas Boulevard as a scenic road with the following guidelines for land development projects. Building setbacks for residential development on the south side of Douglas Boulevard shall be a minimum of 300 feet. This project, while an existing lot, does not meet these setback requirements. The county, I know, has some, somehow magically turned the 300-foot setback requirement into a 75-foot requirement to allow for larger commercial development. Regardless, this project is allowing new construction on this lot to be built closer to Douglas Boulevard, contrary to the intent of the plan. Section 4.1 of the plan states, ensure that new infill construction or substantial expansion of an existing home in, a, in an existing neighborhood is compatible in form, massing, height, setbacks, lot coverage, building materials, design, and orientation, and positively contributes to the existing neighborhood context. 10 states preserve the character of those areas designated for rural residential and real estate housing that contribute to the rural nature of much of Granite Bay. How does this project, which adds over 10,000 square feet of commercial building, even come close to meeting these standards? This project's form, mass, design, and lot coverage are clearly inappropriate for this neighborhood. Section 4.2.1 states, in part, called design principles, all non-residential projects are encouraged to be designed to promote the craftsman style village concept. Uh, this is in the design principles and is meant just to really address commercial projects. The county appears to be conflating the minor use permit requirements in a residential neighborhood and the plan requirements for a commercial building on Douglas Boulevard, presumably because the site of the project fronts Douglas Boulevard. Since the front of the project faces Arabian Circle, why would the design elements for Douglas Boulevard even apply here? This neighborhood does not want to look at a 12,000 square foot craftsman style building with a huge turnaround and parking lot from Arabian Circle. To pretend that this project's in compliance with the code and plan because you're applying Douglas Boulevard commercial zone design elements when the project fronts a private road in a residential neighborhood makes no sense. The design and size should fit within the neighborhood design and plan. Section 4.2.8 of the plan addresses infill and teardown of existing homes. Quoting, several areas of Placer County are currently experiencing infill development or will in the near future. Sensitive and high quality design shall be required for residential intensification projects to ensure compatibility with the existing neighborhood. The replacement of an existing single family residential structure with a newly constructed home can have serious implications to existing neighborhood character. The replacement could occur by utilizing the existing foundation, substantial expansion, or by complete demolition and replacement. 
It includes demolition of existing structure beyond livable conditions or renovations that could add significantly more livable space to the existing structure. The most obvious impact of teardowns in existing neighborhoods is the loss of older houses that become scrape offs because they are seen as outdated or too small. Perhaps even more damaging are the replacements for these demolished homes, massive out of scale new structures that completely ignore the existing character of the neighborhood. While not a serious problem in Granite Bay today, the teardown issue should be monitored over time. As development trends transition, county policy must evolve to help preserve the character of an established neighborhood. At an appropriate time, the county and MAC, MAC must lead the creation of info guidelines, et cetera. The purpose and intent of any future regulations would be to avail neighborhoods of an opportunity to ensure that new and remodeled single family dwellings and related accessory uses and structures are compatible with the height and size of existing dwellings and level of vegetation on surrounding lots. New regulations would serve to establish and maintain a balance between preserving the character of mature neighborhoods while accommodating compatible new residential development. The clear intent of the plan here is to discourage teardowns, which result in massive out of scale new structures that completely ignore the existing character of the neighborhood. The loophole in the code, which might allow a residential care facility, which is massive and out of scale is ludicrous. Would a single family residence renovation of this size and scope be approved in this neighborhood? If not, why should a more commercial type structure even be considered? Section 3.312 of the plan density addresses plan density transfer, which isn't necessarily applicable here, but I just thought I would mention it. As a matter of policy and the plan stating, the plan incorporates and authorizes a density transfer program affecting a limited number of parcels within the plan area. The intent is to create a mechanism which can assist in implementing the goals and policies of the plan relative to the maintenance of a significant open space buffer along the south side of Douglas Boulevard. The program also recognizes the existence of several small lots along Douglas Boulevard. In all cases, these parcels are zoned residential agriculture with a required 2.3 acre minimum parcel size and are therefore currently non-conforming sites. These parcels have been designated as density transfer parcels. Participation in this program is voluntary and it is created here as another form of incentive to help imp implement the goals of the plan. I mentioned this provision because while the Katuna lot is not in the density transfer program, it is a small non-conforming lot under the applicable zoning, RA B100, which requires a minimum of 2.3 acres. The density transfer program was meant to allow the retention of an open space buffer on the south side of Douglas, primarily on both sides of quarry ponds where the density transfer lots uh, are located. Density in many cases were moved off those lots and the lots were preserved as open space. These lots are not far from this project and border the quarry ponds development and were used to add density to new housing developments, including Silverwood. This program shows the clear intent to maintain as much open space as possible on the south side of Douglas. The plan clearly has a goal of preserving as much open space on the south side of Douglas as possible. The further development of the Katuna lot, though it has an existing residence, would appear to be contrary to this goal. Contrary to the, all of these provisions that I've mentioned, uh, the county contends the building design is consistent with the Granite Bay Community Plan. The staff report concludes that the character of the area has a mix of residential and commercial development. The proposed project is consistent with surrounding development along this portion of Douglas Boulevard. In addition, the project would comply with county and community plan design guidelines in terms of architectural design, massing, scale, lot orientation, intensity of use, compatibility with adjacent properties and buildings, vehicular circulation and landscaping. It has been designed to integrate cohesively with adjacent development in a manner that minimizes its impacts on the surrounding properties through provisions that feature high quality architectural elements, massing, articulation, colors, and materials that are compatible with adjacent properties. Preliminary elevations for this project show consistency with the preferred Granite Bay Community Plan, Craftsman Style Village architectural design elements. However, this is a residential neighborhood and the county is attempting to justify this monstrosity by stating that dec decades old grandfathered businesses such as Dick's Taxidermy and the Granite Bay Vet Clinic and civic buildings such as the library and the Lutheran Church, which also predate the latest plan, are, are commercial businesses which justify further commercial development in this residential area. This is wrong and contrary to the plan's goals and policies to limit commercial development along the south side of Douglas Boulevard and preserve open space and residential communities. Incrementally approved dubious commercial projects and residential zones should not create an argument for further commercial projects due to a mix of residential and commercial. Dressing this massive project, this massive project up with faux craftsman style design and stating 
that will enhance this residential rural area is silly. It would be the only craftsman style building on the private road. The craftsman style is dictated for commercial development along Douglas Boulevard. This property is not commercial. It is located in the heart of our neighborhood. The front of the project will not face Douglas. It will face the Arabian Circle. The density of this development is incompatible with this existing neighborhood. The average existing residence is approximately 2,500 square feet and the project will be over 12,000 square feet on the smallest lot in the subdivision. There is no way you can buffer this project from the neighborhood as the residents will drive down the private road past the project on a daily basis. The rural residential zone under the plan is for a rural and equestrian lifestyle. The proposed Katuna home is not compatible with residents walking their horses along Arabian Circle and Palomino Court. Neighbors often share barns or dressage rings and accordingly travel down the streets on horseback. This is not con consistent with the current look of the property neighborhood, which are semi-rural with barns and fields. The county indicated the landscape plan will mitigate this, but crepe myrtle and Japanese maple trees will hardly disguise the immensity of this building. Now that we've seen the elevation drawings, it's abundantly clear that engineering design and landscape will not be enough to make this combined build out of 14,227 square feet of facilities comply with the aesthetic requirements of the Granite Bay community plan on this site. It will be more than five times the average size of the neighborhood homes. The zoning administrator's response about existing commercial business on Douglas as normal failed to recognize the businesses he mentioned were grandfathered in the Granite Bay community plan. Currently at 2171 square foot ranch home with the front pasture is on the corner with the barn behind. That pasture will vanish and a 10,400 addition will stand in its place. The building will stick out like a sore thumb right at the front entrance to the street. Um, the second finding by staff uh, were findings, or our, I'm sorry, our, uh, our second uh, appeal based on inadequate findings made for a minor use permit. Uh, the staff claims they sufficiently mitigated and conditioned the project to ensure the operation and proposed building will not be detrimental to the health, safety, peace, comfort, and general wel welfare of people residing or working in the neighborhood of the proposed use or be detrimental or injurious to property or improvements in the neighborhood or to the general welfare of the county. These include conditions that require road safety improvements, onto, including widening the road, improving the encroachment onto Douglas, and providing sufficient emergency vehicle access and turnaround on site, and claiming that the residential care home operates and functions with a low impact of traffic and is fully contained on site. We completely disagree with the findings that there will be a low impact to traffic. There will be a substantial impact to traffic. If you look at the current traffic flow at Escaton and Country Manor, there are numerous vehicles and trucks parked on the street at numerous times during the day. That will happen here. This intersection is already dangerous given the speed and number of cars and trucks utilizing Douglas Boulevard and the lack of vision. Traffic accidents occur regularly on the stretch of Douglas between Auburn, Folsom, and Barton. Staff claimed during the zoning administrator hearing that no accidents had occurred for the last several years. I think they said three years. Uh, we did some research and obtained CHP records and they showed 32 reportable incidents on this stretch between Auburn, Folsom, and Barton. Um, staff mentioned there's only one accident occurred directly outside, but there are several residents that have, uh, have noticed more, more than that in the last two years, directly outside. Uh, I don't know if these accidents don't get don't get reported because it's not CHP. It might be the county sheriff that's responding to them. But uh, 32 reportable incidents between Auburn, Folsom, and Barton show this entire stretch of road uh, is unsafe. And we're just adding to that. Staff argues that the proposed project use will be consistent with the character of the immediate neighborhood will not be contrary to its orderly development. We maintain that the density of this development is incompatible with the existing neighborhood due to the size of the structure. Visibility from the road and the use not being well suited with the existing rural and equestrian lifestyle. Staff further states that it has reviewed the project for consistency with the character of the immediate neighborhood and found that the use is compatible with the development along the Douglas Boulevard corridor, corridor and that very large residential development is common in Granite Bay. The rationale is that the property directly west operates an approximately 3,700 square foot vet clinic. Farther west along Douglas Boulevard is an art and music center. East of the project is a taxidermy. On the north side is a church and Granite Bay Library. The proposed addition is approximately 10,400 square feet and is architecturally designed to look residential. With the design elements, extensive landscaping, and the character will remain intact. First of all, this project is not a residential development. A house this size, let alone a commercial facility, does not belong in your neighborhood. 
Once built, more commercial traffic, delivery vehicle, staff, and visiting family members will be utilizing the road due to this facility. Development along the Douglas Boulevard is not predetermined to be commercial in nature. As discussed, the commercial zones are located near the intersections of Douglas Albert Folsom and Douglas Barton. The vast majority of non-residential development are in commercially zoned areas. The example cited of compatible projects that were all built long ago and are grandfathered in well before the Granite Bay community was amended. To use these to justify converting residential property in large commercial facilities is ludicrous. And to state that this project is consistent with the character of the immediate neighborhood is false and misleading. Uh, traffic. Staff states the proposed project will not generate a volume of traffic beyond the design capacity of all roads providing access to the project, either those existing or those to be improved with the project unless a specific design deficiency is acknowledged and approved in conjunction with the adoption of a general plan or community plan applicable to the area in question. The appellants contest that the proposed use will exacerbate an already unsafe intersection. The proposed use of a 15 bed care home does not significantly impact traffic due to the likelihood that many, if not all of the residents will be unable to drive. In addition, the anticipated increase in traffic from employees or deliveries is less than significant. Um, at this point, I wanted to queue uh, up three more documents, and I think they were called 3A, B, and, and 5A from submittals. If we could get 3A up, that'd be great. Um, this one is just, uh, and I think it's in your packet, uh, commissioners. Uh, this is the CHP traffic report that details all the um, incidents, the 32 or three incidents that have been on the corridor of Douglas between Auburn, Folsom, and Barton that we um, obtained after the zoning administrator hearing. I think if you if you look at it closely, it just shows the level of um, accidents that are going on here, and it's quite serious. Um, if we could queue 3B now, that'd be great. This is a video basically showing the traffic uh, coming in and out of Arabian Circle off of Douglas. I don't know what time of day this was taken, but um, sometime in the middle of the day. Just shows the difficulty of coming out uh, into the median with all the traffic going both ways and stopping in probably what's an illegal area to stop the double yellow line area. Um, pulling a boat trailer or anything else out and going left is very dangerous. Um, let's see. Okay, we can go ahead and queue 5A. Um, I think this is just a picture of uh, how narrow the road is. This is right. The Katuna property would be just to the right. Um, someone's pulling a trailer in here, and uh, it's just a narrow road, and um, there's just a lot of traffic on it. Thank you. Uh, getting back to traffic, if you note all the other so-called commercial projects in the vicinity have their own direct access onto Doug Douglas Boulevard and not from a private road. The grandfather Granite Bay Vet Clinic, the lone exception. If you believe this commercial facility belongs here, it needs to have direct access to Douglas to lower the impact on the neighborhood. Rather than the county, rather the county's attempting to dress up an already dangerous intersection with a few modifications. The expansion of the entry exit on Arabian and the addition of a 15 bed facility creates an improper and unsafe use of a private road easement. It creates added traffic noise and bottleneck at the only way in and out of our street. The Katuna's use of the street easement by vehicles supporting their operation will be disproportionately heavier than the daily use of all the other owners and residences. This will be an unreasonable burden on the easement, which is intended for residential use and access. I think it was mentioned here that that might not be something for the county to consider, but um, the, the road maintenance, um, the, the easement was created, I believe, back in 1975 
when it was created, it was created for only four parcels, which have been since subdivided. So uh, we certainly have a claim here that this is going to create an undue burden on our easement. So that'll be litigated later. Um, just to mention use of this road, I personally have a ski boat with a trailer, a fishing boat with a trailer, two other different tra trailers, including a travel trailer. Many of my neighbors do as well. We pull them in and out. It's already difficult to get two trailers, you know, side by side going past each other. Now we're going to have all kinds of additional uh, commercial vehicles, uh, FedEx delivery trucks, 911 calls, fire engines on this road, um, not making it any safer. The current plan is poorly designed and unsafe, showing an exit before the entrance to the circular driveway, the left turn in. Even with signage, this will confuse drivers who are unfamiliar with the street, creating yet another hazard. Add to this, the customer is already entering and exiting the vet clinic, which is directly across from, from uh, the Katuna care home on Arabian Circle. And this will only worsen the congestion at this entrance to our neighborhood. This point has not been mitigated. Um, the Elon Glen project on Eureka apparently was modified to require access on a public road when the residents objected to entry on a private road. Um, apparently they're saying this project couldn't access off Douglas and therefore they're using our private road now to make it happen. And that just doesn't make any sense. The county stated the facility will generate 30 trips per day. I'm not sure what they base that on. They say there's going to be five to seven staffers there. I can't see if the average uh, residence has 10 trips a day with an average of two people in the house and they have five to seven staff people. How does that equate to 30 trips a day? Uh, in addition, uh, given this is not, they're not going to have a medical person on staff. Anytime there's an emergency, you're going to be calling 911. Um, I don't know how often that's going to be, but uh, that's going to create create a big mess in front of the facility. We believe this facility will generate much more traffic. The type and number of vehicles will include the following. Guest vehicles, FedEx and Amazon vans, transport vans, food and supply deliveries, therapists, medical personnel, maintenance help, dumpster pickup, hazardous waste disposal, and fire department emergency vehicles, 911 vehicles to support the operation. Once approved, how will this be enforced or monitored if the number of trips vastly exceed the 30 projected daily trips? The residents will have to live with this increased traffic if approved. The Katunas contend they will do all their own shopping for groceries. Maybe that's true. But what if this facility is sold? Operations can change overnight. A big corporate uh, conglomerate can take over something like this. If you look at the Country Manor facility, which was approved with a minimum number of parking spaces, daily there are cars, delivery vehicles, and fire trucks parked along the road. We don't want that to happen to Arabian Circle. Um, Arabian Circle and Offshoot Street, Palomino Court are both dead ends. There's only one way in and out, the entrance at Douglas. The county has not addressed the danger presented by the addition of a care home on the corner of a street with no second egress. South Placer Fire Protection District Subdivision Site Requirements, Appendix B states, the maximum length of a dead end road, including all dead end roads accessed from that dead end road, so not exceed the following cumulative lengths, regardless of the number of parcels served. Parcel zone for one acre to 4.9 acres, 1,320 feet. Yet Arabian Circle and its offshoot Palomino Court measure 2,700 feet in length, more than double that maximum. Let's see. We also assert that the counties failed to make proper findings for mitigated neg neg deck under CEQA. The neg deck concluded that the pro proposed project is an appropriate land use and building structure for the land use and zoning designations that is consistent with the surrounding development and uses. The proposed project would be consistent with the visual character of surrounding developments. Given the visual character of the existing site, the, ex the addition of the proposed project would not degrade the visual character or quality of the site and its surroundings. Impacts to visual character would be less than significant. No mitigation measures are required. We assert this conclusion was an error. The project is not an appropriate land use and the building structure is not consistent with the surrounding development and uses. The neg deck in assessing views stated, views to or from the proposed project site would be short range and limited to travelers on Douglas Boulevard and Arabian Circle. Current views of the proposed project site include the existing fallow land, barn and single family dwelling which are limited along Douglas Boulevard because the grade between the existing travel way and natural grade on property 
ranges between four to seven feet, creating a bank. The construction of a single story, 10,400 square foot building plus landscaping would change the visual quality of the proposed project site and surrounding area. However, the proposed structure is consistent with the Granite Bay Community Plan area, Douglas Boulevard setbacks and landscaping, further design similar in nature to surrounding buildings. Construction of the proposed development would not interfere with or degrade a scenic vista in the proposed project as design complies with, complies with the requirements of the scenic road guidelines of the Granite Bay Community Plan. A less than significant impact would occur. No mitigation measures are required. We assert this finding is an error due to the extreme change this project would be to the surrounding area and to the fact that Douglas Boulevard is a scenic road and there are guidelines in the plan. The proposed structure does not meet much of the Granite Bay community plan as, as discussed elsewhere previously. The NEG deck concluded that there would be less than significant impact stating, the proposed project does not significantly con conflict with general plan, community plan, specific plan policies relating to grading drainage and transportation, construction of the proposed project improvements would not result in the removal of any native trees. Overall, the proposed project would not conflict with applicable land use plans, policies, or regulations, and impacts would be less than significant. No mitigation measures are required. For the reasons stated in this appeal, we assert that the project does conflict in numerous ways with the code and the plan, and that the conclusion there would be no significant impact is in error. <laughs> Public services, uh, would the project result in substantial adverse physical impacts associated with the provision of new or physically altered government facilities? The NEGDEC stated with respect to fire services, the incremental increase in demand for fire protection services would create a less than significant impact. No mitigation measures are required. We believe the NEGDEC is an error and there will be significant increase in demand for fire protection and EMS services at a large facility of this nature. I'm going to wrap this up. Bear with me. Uh, in conclusion, we assert the project's wholly unsuited for our neighborhood for the reasons stated above. Approval of this project is in direct conflict with the Granite Bay Community Plan's goals and policies to limit commercial development along the south side of Douglas Boulevard and preserve open space and residential communities. Incrementally approved dubious commercial projects in residential zones should not create an argument for further commercial projects due to a mix of residential and commercial. Dressing this massive project up with faux craftsman style design and stating that it will enhance this residential rural area is silly. It would be the only craftsman style building on the private road. This property is not commercial. It's located in the heart of our neighborhood. The front of the project will not face Douglas. It will face Arabian Circle. The density of this development is incompatible with the existing neighborhood. The average existing residence, again, is approximately 2,500 square feet, and the project will be over 12,000 square feet on the smallest lot in the subdivision. There's no way you can buffer this project from the neighborhood as the residents will drive down the private road past the project on a daily basis. The rural residential zone under the plan is for a rural and equestrian lifestyle. The proposed Katuna home is not compatible with the size and mass, with its size and mass with Arabian Circle and Palomino Court residences. I have, I'm a licensed real estate broker and I have no doubt that this will reduce the value of Arabian Circle and Palomino Court homes. We already have one new homeowner couple who closed on their house only to discover this, pro discover this project afterwards and may have adjustable viable claim for damages against their seller. I would like to read their statement right now. Bear with me. Um, this is, uh, let's see, Susan and David Prasado. Date August 26th to Placid County. You know, we, we have that. We have read that. I don't think there's really a need to reread that to us. Okay, no problem. Another homeowner who re relocated here from another nice Granite Bay neighborhood to live out their country living dream or considering moving yet again if this passes and is built. None of us are against care facility homes and a, and a six bed home here would integrate nicely into the neighborhood. <coughs> um, but we are against the large overly commercial facility that pretty much ruins our street. Um, one note, the bio, biological study that was done by the Katuna is listed on the cover page, Prestige Care Homes. We don't know if this is a mistake or a clue that a large company is behind this application. What it means is unlike a residence where you know your neighbors, this facility once approved could be sold to any number of large operators. And if you don't condition this facility, they can do whatever they want. That will impact the neighborhood and the house values. 
Granite Bay is already overbuilt with over 800 approved care beds. This amounts to 200 beds per 1,000 people over the age of 65. California has an average of 50 care beds per 1,000 people over 65. And the national average is just 31 beds per 1,000 people. In addition, we already have an approved yet unbuilt large, much larger care facility that's three parcels to the west. We don't know if that's going to be built or when, but that's just going to be adding to the numbers. What will that do to traffic once yet another ingress and egress is put on the south side of Douglas um, in the vicinity? Future uses. There's precedent from the 2013 appeal hearing for Elam Glen. Many neighbors spoke strongly about higher impact uses of the minor use permit. If and when the demand for senior residences fluctuates, houses with a dozen or more attached rooms are not easily converted back into single family dwellings. In other communities, such facilities have converted to much higher impact uses, such as drug rehab, halfway houses, and homeless shelters. With younger, healthier clients, the impact on the surrounding neighborhood has markedly increased. Um, all the residents in the neighborhood are unanimously against this project, as are 288 petitioners, most of which are from Granite Bay. Um, no one's really for it other than the Katunas and county staff at this point. Despite all these reasons why the project should be disapproved, if approved, we ask the following conditions of approval be adopted. And I think some of these have already been discussed. Placer County Code allows a six bed facility with a zoning clearance. And in fact, there'd be nothing to stop such a facility. We'd be in favor of such a facility. A, fil a facility of this size, however, will ruin the neighborhood. We ask that the facility be reduced to a six bed facility. Our neighborhood has no sidewalks and three blind turns. At the zoning administrator hearing, there was a condition agreed upon that all patients and residences will stay out of the fence line and not be on Arabian Circle. That condition changed to they will not be exercising. I just want to make sure that that's clarified to mean no residents or patients can access Arabian Circle. Um, Again, we'd like the facility to be restricted to dementia only as the Elam Glen facility was. Um, also, there was uh, something from the engineering and surveying department of Placer County stating that if the fence is inside the Arabian Circle easement, this should be moved outside of the right of way as the Katunas have not attempted to obtain the residence approval. I don't know from the plans if that fence is still in the 50 foot right of way or not, but we would request it be moved outside. Um, and again, we'd like the project modified so access is off of Douglas Boulevard. Um, there was some talk about the overflow parking that was approved at the zoning administrator hearing. The original engineering survey uh, department, I believe it was back in late 2019, stated that the improvement plans shall show all on-site parking and circulation areas improved with a minimum asphaltic concrete or Portland cement surface capable of supporting anticipated vehicle loadings. Um, this parking really is not going to be temporary and we want that to conform to that requirement. Otherwise there'll be dust. Uh, that road's going to be going right next to the neighbor. Um, for all the aforementioned reasons, uh, we seek to have the planning commission overturn the approval of the minor use permit and deny the mitigated neg deck for the Katuna care home. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you for your time. At this time, uh, applicants' response, Katunas, uh, would you provide a uh, comment to the commission? What's that? Oh, okay. I think they're trying to talk. And sounds like you may be muted. There you go. Yeah, we don't have any comments. All right, thank you so much. So at this point in time, uh, are there any questions of the commissioner staff of the applicant, the Katunas, or the appellants? No? All right. So at this time, let's open the public comment period. Uh, again, okay, so we're, just so everybody knows, we're taking the call-ins uh, first, and then we will take the Zoom hand. So if you're calling in, it's a uh, star nine to raise your hand. And if you're on the Zoom call, uh, there is a raise your hand function that you click. So, Sue, and uh, everyone will have three minutes.
Good morning. Please state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. Uh, my name is Kathy Ellis. Um, am I on? Yes, you're on. Oh, okay. Okay, my name is Kathy Ellis, and I've lived on the Radian Circle for 18 years. And before I start, I'd like the commissioners to know that the Katoos bought this property approximately three years ago, and they have never, ever met with the neighborhood to discuss their plans. We were all extremely surprised when we got the county documents. In addition, I'd like to say that the Katoos Residential Care Facility is a perfect example of what is wrong with Placer County development, and a big reason why the current supervisor for our district was voted out. The county is so focused on development trees that they have ignored the quality of life of its existing residents and have approved the patchwork of dubious development along Douglas as evidenced by the plethora of vacancy signs. The county does not have to live with the results of their decisions, but we, the residents, do. The county has made the traffic and parking assumptions for the Katuna facility based only on the word from the Katunas that it will be a dementia care facility where the residents will not be driving. When asked that the Katuna MUP be only for dementia care patients, something which the county has previously done with the Elam Glen facility, the county claims it is not within their jurisdiction. Why was it within their jurisdiction with Elam Glen? Without the dementia care only including an MUP, the Katunas can change their patient base or sell it to someone who can change it to many other types of residential care in which the residents have cars. We once again ask if the county approves us that it include in the MUP that the facility is only for dementia care patients and treat us equally with the Elon Glen facility. In addition, Arabian Circle is a nomer. By a circular easement, there is only one egress. The other possible egress is obstructed by redwood trees and a block wall. And as mentioned previously, this road is, does not meet current fire code. It is over double the current fire code length for a dead end road such as ours. And in addition, it is well known that residential care facilities need frequent emergency responses. Katunas picked a very poor site for the proposal as it will obstruct the only egress for 18 other families on a road that does not meet current fire code. It is dangerous in case we have to evacuate to have a large facility with many frail and often immobile patients blocking our only egress on a road that does not meet current fire codes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record, and you'll have three minutes. My name is Will Ellis. I have been a resident on the Radiant Circle for 18 years. Almost 15 years ago, there was an article in the Granite Bay View entitled Land Use Conflict Brewing. It reported that a couple owning a parcel, two parcels west of Katunas, was interested in building a residential care facility on Douglas Boulevard. They considered themselves to be, quote, surrounded by commercial, unquote. That statement was absolutely false. There's nothing commercially zoned within a quarter mile in all directions. As mentioned by Mr. Peterson's excellent presentation, the uses of the land currently, such as the church and the library, predated the Granite Bay Community Plan and enhanced the neighborhood. Unfortunately, the title of that article 15 years ago was sadly prophetic. Since that couple's failure to obtain a permit, there's been conflict about increasing density in residential Granite Bay. Many facilities have applied for minor use permits, even Glen expanded from 6 to 20 beds. Country houses built with 49 more beds. And three parcels west of the tune is a minor use permit for dementia care with approximately 40 beds was recently renewed without opposition from the neighborhood. More than 100 beds have been allowed at Sierra College. The overbuilding of residential care facilities is a significant concern. At the, appeal, or at the um, zoning commissioner hearing, we discussed Care Meridian. Care Meridian has recently been relicensed as a sub-acute facility and is now called Neuro Restorative. 
There are residences in Roseville and Rockland that have converted into homeless shelters, halfway houses, and substance abuse treatment centers. The overbuilding and subsequent conversion of higher impact use has long been a concern. As previously mentioned, there was a compromise with Elam Glen and other facilities agreeing to be dementia only. But the tenants have repeatedly stated they are building a facility for dementia patients. The county staff has gone with this assumption and given Katunas a very favorable impact statement for this proposal. We believe that the two need to be matched. That if the calculations are going to be done on the basis of a dementia facility with no drivers, the facility needs to be limited to that. If the calculations are Excuse me. If that assumption is not going to be met with a condition of approval, we demand that the calculations be redone, assuming all 15 residents are drivers. And then the true impact of this facility and its potential misuse can be fully evaluated. If the Katunas are honest in their declarations that this is a dementia facility, we ask them simply to acknowledge that with a condition of approval. Isn't that a better solution than ongoing opposition, appeals, and further legal conflict? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Rogers. My family and I, we live on Boardwalk Drive. We support the appeal to deny the proposed project for three main reasons. First, the location is not safe for those suffering with dementia. It is too close to Douglas, which is already a hazardous road. Our family cannot even cross Douglas because the cars drive too fast. We have to use Auburn Folsom and Eureka to exit. If anyone were to get confused, it is far too dangerous of a road for loved ones. Second, this is a dangerous and ill-advised precedent. Once built, the facility will always serve as a facility. The Commission needs to consider all possible uses for this facility, even those beyond your tenure. We encountered a similar issue in Burbank where we moved from a couple of years ago where the city was considering adding treatment centers in the community, such as halfway houses and rehab facilities for drug and alcohol. We are a family of two young girls and do not want to be in a position where treatment centers are behind our home. Third, it will affect our property values. A large facility will not increase our property values, but has the more likely effect to decrease them. The reason we selected to live in Granite Bay is because of the stable home values, large parcels, and overwhelming sense of a family-oriented neighborhood. In short, the location is dangerous. The precedent is dangerous. The risk to home values is dangerous. I ask the Commission to consider that your decision today may enable someone sitting in your seat in 10 to 15 years to vote to turn the location into a rehabilitation facility. The major tenants of living in Granite Bay, safe communities, stable home values, and family-oriented neighborhoods. The proposed facility calls into question each of those tenants. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. My name is Bruce Broadwater. I live at 6530 Arabian Circle, which is the diagonal neighbor across the street from the Katuna Project. Uh, we purchased this property in 2010, so we've been 10 year residents here. And we disagree with the findings of the mitigated negative declaration and the very existence of this proposal. We would agree to a six-bed facility, that seems reasonable, but adding this size of a facility is clearly disruptive to our neighborhood. I do agree with all of the comments that Mr. Peterson and the previous speakers have made. Um, disruption coming into this neighborhood is apparently not something that staff seems to be material. Um, I disagree with that. 
that and on every aspect of it. Living across the street, every time there is the, every time the employees are coming and going, the delivery trucks, the emergency vehicles, the medical personnel, the property maintenance personnel, that will disrupt my life and will interfere with what we do on the street. The staff doesn't seem to think that this is um, an inconsistent fit with the structure of the, and architecture um, on Douglas Boulevard. As pointed out previously, I'm not sure what difference what Douglas Boulevard makes on this, considering the fact that this facility fronts Arabian Circle. That's our street, that's the one we're compared to, and it's not uh, a fit in any form or manner. Another piece of this is the fact that it seems a little myopic on the county's part to see this, this project as a standalone impact to the area. We already know that there's going to be homes added east of Auburn Folsom Road. There's a new business, new businesses and homes are going to be added over in the Quarry Pond area. There's new construction on Berg, and there are more homes that are being added over on Eureka and the Auburn Folsom area. All of this adds to the already significant congestion on our street um, and on our access to our neighborhood. One of the points that's been brought up here is that the visitor parking and walking on Arabian Circle will be, will be prevented by the contract that the resident signs. Um, my concern with this is that th this is not enforceable. The COA 47 and 48 are not enforceable unless there's an incident. Um, family and visitors don't sign the contract saying that they'll restrict their time in. I don't think anybody is telling all of the family at Christmas that, oh, don't park on Arabian Circle. They'll come as they please two or three cars, whatever it is, and it won't be an issue until there is an incident and then we'll have to resolve it afterwards and still live with the existence of this monstrosity facility. One thing that, I, that seems to be omitted from the discussion of the size of this is there's also a garage in this facility which has at least another 400 square feet of improved area on that particular plot. And could again, you, if could the you wrap up your comments, that, you, you've had your three minutes, but could you wrap them up? Yes, I will. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'll ask that this project be denied along with the, the uh, mitigated negative declaration because we're in pretty serious disagreement with the staff's findings. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. Yeah, this is Mike. No this is Mike Naki. I'm at 6600 Arabian Circle. Uh, we are new to the area. Uh, we moved into the neighborhood uh, June of 2019, and then shortly thereafter, found out about the Katunia Program project. Um, I have two major issues. One is having to do with uh, patients and or visitors uh, being off the property. Um, it's, this is a private neighborhood. It's a private road. It's maintained by all the, uh, the homeowners in the neighborhood. Um, and I was concerned about liability. And uh, in our last hearing, I think it was George. George indicated with uh, the continuous that um, uh, that they would agree to having nobody off the premises. And then when you guys wrote up your write-up, you put some kind of uh, wording in there that there would be no exercising uh, off the property, which, which to me, I totally disagree with, totally poppycock. I don't want anyone off the property because I don't want the liability. And, uh, you know, if somebody comes by my house and trips and falls and I get sued, um, because uh, the road or whatever, um, I would like a hold, hold harmless or um, that nobody leaves the property like we agreed to. So I'd like you to rewrite that part and keep the people uh, on, on the, the tenant's, uh, uh property. And that leads me to the second thing. It is a private road. So the county has no jurisdiction on making decisions on the private road. Put the entrance off of Douglas. Don't put it on 
on the private road. You're affecting 17 other homeowners. And so you guys can easily put the entrance on Douglas. It's not cumbersome. You've got, you've got the veterinary clinic. You've got the taxidermy. Have them come in off of Douglas and, and keep them off, uh, off Arabian Circle and keep them off the private road. So, I, in general, I'm, I'm obviously disagreeing with this whole project. I don't want a monstrosity uh, property in, in a residential neighborhood that, you know, kind of keeps the charm of Granite Bay, and that's the reason why we came to Granite Bay. And I don't want to lose that. So, um, that's really my two cents. Um, I hope you guys can uh, uh, understand our concerns and... Um, uh, I, I'm not in favor of this project, and, and thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak, and have a great day. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Good morning. My name is Susan Persado. I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my husband, Dave. Um, earlier, it was mentioned that the letter I sent in last night was already um, admitted to the to the council, so I won't be bringing that up today. Um, but I wanted to say we are very strongly opposed, like Mike and the others, with a proposed project. Um, like Mike, we moved into the area, but more recently, just in June 2020, we purchased our house. And at that time, we just had no idea that this was going on. Um, after listening to our appeal, I'm um, surprised how unrealistic the um, answers Sounded, the responses from the county. Um, folks of your experience and expertise are aware of the reality of starting and operating a new business, not just a regular retail business, but a 24 hour business. This brings all of our concerns about noise, traffic, parking, safety, even more obvious because it's much greater than eight hours a day. Um, of all the staff that could be coming to the property that John had mentioned, I can imagine building maintenance, yard maintenance, staff licensing. Uh, medical care staff on site and off, janitorial, kitchen, emergency vehicles, and each of these brings more obvious issues of intrusive lighting, noise, and parking. For me, parking and lighting are a particular concern because our property is adjacent to what will supposedly be the overflow parking area. But with the insufficient proposed front entrance parking, it's obvious that this back lot, which supposedly will be gravel, is going to be directly next to our backyard. It won't be temporary, it will be used, and it will be used at all hours. And once a building is um, constructed, it's obvious that, like any other neighborhood business, the policing will be left to the neighbors. Heaven forbid that the business fails or is settled and something entirely new is put into its place, starting the process all over again. Who would be around at that time to enforce the restrictions? And um, lastly, it was, uh, I had mentioned that we didn't receive any correspondence during the time we were in escrow about this um, event occurring. Um, it was mentioned this morning that uh, correspondence was sent out. I would like to request proof of um, when, what date, and what form all the neighboring properties within 300 feet were informed. Um, if I'm incorrect, my understanding is that if a home is under contract, both parties of the ESPO are required to receive a notice of this proposal. In conclusion, I'm very disappointed that the county is not taking no responsibility for the protection of its residents' investment, safety, and quality of life. For my family in particular, this is a very disappointing way to start a new life in the beautiful town of Granite Bay. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Uh, thank you. My name is Debbie Gordon, and my husband, Richard Gordon, we are submitting these comments together, so it might go a few seconds over three minutes. He didn't want to call in separately. We live at 6555 Arabian Circle. We bought this home in 2001 and chose this neighborhood because of the center rural feel and because it was already established and built. So we had a reasonable assurance of no surprise development later on. We've made a significant investment to live here, remodeling our home, paying significant taxes and fees to the county over the years, and never expected a neighbor to buy a home just to convert it to a commercial business. The CDRA staff report dated August 17th is insufficient and contains the following errors and inconsistencies. 
Number one, the May 20th zoning hearing George Rosasco required several conditions of approval. On the video recording at 2 hours, 20 minutes, and 38 seconds, he requires that, quote, residents of the residential care home not be allowed to walk around outside or off the premises so that they won't create any problems for the existing neighbors, unquote. However, that condition has been altered by the county in the written conditions number 48, which states now that the residents, quote, shall not exercise on Arabian Circle, unquote. This is a different condition and a falsification of the original wording. The county needs to change this condition back to what we all heard, what is on the video, and what the Katrina's agreed to. Number two, there's been extensive comments today about the road hazards, and the August 17th report is insufficient. When we questioned the county's report of zero accidents from 2017 to 2020, the county told us to check with the CHP. So we did that and produced the 35-page report that you have in the appeal. I spoke personally with CHP officer Luther, Lucy, who was reported to KCRA, but this immediate area is one of the most hazardous spots in Placer County, yet your report shows just one accident due to a medical emergency. This, I feel, is insufficient and reckless. The proposed widening of Arabian only addresses one side of Douglas. And the safety study that Ms. Farnham mentioned earlier today does not provide any specifics to reassure us. The proposed widening addresses only one side. We come and go from Arabian daily, and the Katuna home will make our coming and going more dangerous. Number three, exterior fencing in the plans violates the road easement. The county's previous report noted that Katuna's exterior fence line it's within the Arabian road easement. Fences must be 25 feet or more from the center of the road. The previous report required that the Katuna fence line be moved inward. What is the status of this requirement? Couple more points. Number four, it's already been spoken about fire and emergency, but I just want to mention that uh, in June, and you have a video of this we submitted, um, there was a fire at the end of Palomino. Uh, could uh, could you wrap up your comments so your three minutes have passed? May I have my husband finish then? Because we were supposed to get three minutes each. That would be fine. State your name for the record, and you have three minutes. My name is Richard Gordon. I'm, I live at 655 Island Union Circle in Granite Bay. I'm complaining what my wife was going to read for me. You have um, and for read it for me because my eyesight's bad. I'm sorry, could you restate that? He did not want to read because his eyesight is strained and bad, and so I was going to read the rest of the comments. May we please finish? No, actually, uh, he needs to finish. It's his three minutes. I give me three minutes. Let's do this. Just, just three minutes. Try to go with this. Also, in the the fire, Folsom, Lockland, and Glen Bay Fire Department had to show up. This is a commercial business, not a private business. Um, All we're doing is exploiting the private street for a commercial business. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. How many calls are there? Good morning. Please, Hi. Please state your name for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Uh, hi, my name is Mimi Gearing, and I live at 8787 Palomino Court. Um, I'd like to start off my three minutes with an assumption. Let's assume why people moved to Granite Bay. I'm going to assume it is mainly for the same reasons that I moved to Granite Bay. For space, tranquility, and a removal from the busyness of everyday hectic life. Why is Granite Bay turning into a commercial hotbed? Why so much growth? Why is our footprint changing from the original plan of a primary residential suburb of Sacramento? Key word is residential. As you sit there, please remember who you represent. We elected you to be our voice. 
If you could guarantee me that our quiet residential neighborhood would not change, not turn into an eyesore, looking and feeling more like a commercial zone than a residential one, with people and vehicles coming and going all day, I would be in support of this project. But you or no one else sitting on the board can guarantee it because that is exactly what it is proposed to do. How will this addition not bring our property values down? I am a licensed real estate agent and I assure you this proposal will decrease home values. How could it not? It is a detriment to our beautiful residential neighborhood. You cannot ignore the fact that all of the homeowners living on Arabian and Palomino, let me repeat that, all of the homeowners are in opposition to this project, except for the Katuna, the ones benefiting from this proposal. Doesn't the majority of 17 homeowners hold more weight than a single homeowner? The last time I checked out what the word democracy meant, it was defined as government by the people, especially rule of the majority. I understand the increasing need for elderly and memory care facilities. This small private street in Granite Bay is not the proper place. There are better areas for sure. Ones that are more suited to handle the size of the building required, the traffic and commotion that will come along with it, <clears throat> excuse me, but not on our tiny private street for our 18 homeowners. I do not understand why people elected to a position of power feel the necessity to ruin the intent of this town for the pursuit of revenue. Thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to present my position. Thank you. Good morning. Please state your name for the record and you'll have three minutes. Good morning. My name is Sandy Harris and uh, the Granite Bay Community Association has submitted two letters in response to this project, which I hope you have read. But I want to add the following comments. I have a scanner and in June there was a dispatch for a vegetation fire on the westernmost area of South Placer Fire District. As is a practice, numerous equipment was dispatched to these fires in order to get the fire under control quickly. Shortly after this call, another call was received for a vegetation fire off Palmetto Court, and the call went out for mutual aid from Rockland, Roseville, and Folsom, since South Placer was still engaged with the first call. Boy, I hope they can find that little road since not familiar with the area and the rural lane they had to access. It was a critical fire situation, and more equipment was called for help from the air, etc. Some personnel were directed to Eureka Road to access from there. It was a dramatic situation, and I immediately thought of how would the residents evacuate if they had to with all that equipment on the only way out, and how would it be if 15 elderly patients were added to the congestion? This project was never presented at MET due to the virus. It has been opposed by the residents of the area from the very first they heard of it. It never should have gotten this far. It does not fit the rural area. The, money, the, the zoning administrator noted that there were other commercial on Douglas, but this is not. I have lived in Granite Bay for 43 years, and the vet has always been there. It is on Douglas and serves the neighbors. Church has also been there as long as I can remember. The taxidermist is home to business assessed from Douglas and has also been there as long as I remember. The project requires a minor use permit which singles that this use is more than residential and needs more than usual consideration. Grant is overbuilt with this type of facility more than meeting the recommended number. Please support the residents of this community and deny the application. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's all the phone calls coming in. Now we'll go to the persons uh, on the Zoom call. So you're uh, opening those up. Mm -hmm. All right. I've asked Mr. Bond. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Bowman, if you'd like to unmute. Can you do that, Sue? I, ha I asked him to, but he has to do it on his He account. has to do it. Okay. So, Mr. Bowman, I, uh, if you could unmute your microphone so that we can hear you. Sue, how about we take the next one? And uh, Mr. Bowman, if you return, uh, would you raise your hand again? Who's going to be next? It's just a phone number. I don't know. Okay. Um, this is the Ellis's. We've already spoken. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Looks like he's on the up. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Here's a new one. What's that? Here's a new one. Okay. Hello, this is Clint Fleener. I'm a resident uh, uh, 6610 Arabian Circle. I've been here since 1998. Okay, you have, add, you'll have three minutes. Of course, yeah. Uh, just thanks for the opportunity to speak. I also wanted to uh, extend my opposition to this proposal and to discuss what my neighbors have uh, also discussed. There was recently a fire here, as we uh, noted on a empty lot down the street and in several instances it was very difficult for uh, fire trucks to get more than one fire truck uh, across the easement so any sort of uh, increased traffic there is going to essentially block the road for the other residents uh, and that is uh, you know chief a chief concern of mine and a chief concern of, uh, of all of us here I think is our safety and our ability to get uh, in and out of our road uh, just during the normal day. Uh, other than that, I think uh, many of our other issues have been addressed, so I will see my time, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Bowman. Uh, Mr. Bowman, are you uh, available, and can you unmute your phone or your, t your computer microphone? Are there others uh, who want to speak? Okay. Uh, question of you, uh, County Council, not responding here. Uh, is there an approach that we should take? Uh, so you have a couple options. One is, uh, I guess you could um, go ahead and close public comment. Uh, the other one, you could, I guess, give him some more time. Um, in the event he is able to reconnect, you could always evaluate that and evaluate reopening public comment if you wanted to do so. Um, or, any of those right. are potential options. Call in. You could also provide, yeah, call in number for him um, if uh, there's some sort of technical issues to why he can't uh, unmute. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Bowman, we would like to have the opportunity to hear what you have to say. Uh, you can call in on the number 888 788 0099 or call in on 877. 853-5247. Um, enter the number for the webinar of 941-0978-7915 and then press star six. I'm st actually star nine in order to raise your hand and we will accept the call. So at this point in time, um, you want to I ask him to press star six to unmute? Oh, and press star six to unmute, yeah. So at this point in time, uh, we will wait for the call uh, to come in. Um, I, I'm thinking what we could do is have uh, commission comments or questions at this point in time, and if he either calls in or unmutes himself, then we'll take those comments. So um, I'm leaving the public hearing open, is that appropriate, or should we close a public hearing and wait and if he does come in, open it up again. 
Uh, so traditionally, we would close the public okay. hearing part before deliberations, but you can certainly elect to leave it open if you want to. All right. It looks like, Mr. Bowman, you're off mute. Are you available? Okay. Uh, I'm going to close the public hearing at this point in time. We will hope that Mr. Bowman makes contact with us, uh, and then we'll open up the hearing for his comments. So at this time, uh, comments or questions of the commission? We have, uh, Rick. go ahead. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I do have a question for our, uh, for, yeah, Delaney. <laughs> and uh, one thing that was a little bit confusing to me is I see in the uh, conditions that there's a easement of 70 feet on Douglas Boulevard. And uh, but somebody was saying along the way that there's a 300 foot setback from Douglas Boulevard. Sure, I can address that. Huh? So I, I'm happy to address that for you. So our Granite Bay Community Plan does have uh, development standards and setbacks along Douglas Boulevard. There is a um, condi or a, a policy for undeveloped lots on the southern side of Douglas Boulevard. They do have a 300 foot setback. In this case, we have an existing uh, single-family dwelling that's been developed on the lot. When that's the case, we then refer to the setback according to the north side of Douglas Boulevard. And so the north side Douglas Boulevard setback is a 70-foot right-of-way, and we measure the front as 75 feet from the edge of that 70-foot right-of-way. So in this case, we apply the north side setback as stated in the Granite Bay Community Plan because the site is developed. So... From the edge of the 75 feet, and so it's there's a setback of, in essence, with the easement of 145 feet. Yeah, from like center line. Yeah, so if we we're measuring from center line, it would be about 145 feet from center line of Douglas, but we're looking at to the edge of the 70 foot right of way. So 75 feet from edge of 70 foot right of way. Okay. Let me see. Uh, another question is. Uh, I guess the purpose that's stated is uh, to take care of people with dementia or that kind of thing. And so uh, there's really no way for the county control if they change the purpose, say they wanted to turn it into a like homeless type people or something else. Um, in this case, it would be limited to residential care home. Um, if the use were to change, they would have to come in for a modification. Um, as far as the dementia care, uh, being specific to dementia care, at this point we felt it wasn't necessary to condition the project for dementia only because it's up to the state licensing to uh, give them the license to serve dementia care. So they have separate um, requirements to serve that specific population. So in this case, our zoning ordinance, the way a residential care home is um, defined, does not say specific to dementia care. So we're keeping in line with our zoning ordinance definition of residential care home and leaving the dementia care up to the state licensing for them to meet those requirements. So once they get their license in the state's in control of the purpose? Correct. Okay. We see, uh, I guess um, there's a lot of discussion about the road, and it appears to me that the requirement for the uh, access to the, the facility is going to bring the road in front of the facility up to the uh, fire code standard. Okay. And so actually uh, the residents are actually going to be benefiting because the road is going to be improved at least up to the property line of the... Of Correct. The Improvements would include the encroachment, the Arabian Circle Douglas intersection encroachment improvement, as well as widening Arabian Circle from Douglas Boulevard to the south property line of this project site. So from Douglas to the south property line, we're looking at from 14 feet, which, which is existing, to now a 20-foot paved uh, road with two-foot shoulders. So that will allow for passing, safer passing on vehicles, also um, you know, more room for vehicles entering and exiting for better visibility. Okay. And then an, another little thing that was puzzling me a little bit is in the uh, map that shows the uh, 
this map here, the map that shows the uh, parcel. Mm -hmm. And on that map, they show the in and out to the facility. But then there's what looks like a, there's a symbol there that looks like a bottle that's got hash marks on it. Okay. And yeah. so I was wondering what that is. Okay. Is there a way to pull up the PowerPoint? Commissioner Johnson, just for reference, what page number were you looking at on that map? You... Oh, it's page number uh, attachment D, it says. Okay. And I think the, it's up here right now on okay. the screen. Gotcha. And this, this is kind of a minor point, but I was sure. just wondering what that symbol really represents. Uh, are, you, are you referring to this area here? Yeah, the bottle looking. Correct. So hash marks. I'll go ahead and go to a, a better view of that. Okay. So the hash mark is, um, this is the designated ADA uh, parking spaces. This area is actually a, an indication of like a crosswalk or pedestrian pathway to get to the main entrance. Okay. So vehicles parked here, um, this indicates that there's pedestrian pathway okay. crossing the parking lot. That explains it very that, clearly. Yeah. Thank you. I guess that's, that's my question for now. Um, we do have a raised hand, so let me open up the public hearing for the raised hand, then we'll come back to the commission. Please state your name for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Mr. Bowman is on, but not speaking. You said they hung up? It looks like it. All right. Uh, while we're in the public hearing and open, Mr. Bowman, can are you available to speak with us? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see the mute button on, so. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing again, bring it back to the commission. Other comments or questions? Um, sure. Question for you, Delaney. Hello. Oh, okay. Oh. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me okay? We can hear you. You have three minutes. State your name for the record, please. And oh, open public, I'm, I'm opening public comment again. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And thanks to the commission for allowing us to speak. Um, I think the little high-tech system here got a little beyond me. But anyway, um, one thing is uh, this, this permit Could is we have your called... Name? Could we have your name, sir, please? Yeah, it's uh, Stephen Bowman. Oh, it is. Oh, thank you. And I'm at 6630 Arabian Circle, been here for uh, over 35 years, my wife and I. Anyway, um, the commission calls this uh, permit a minor use permit. And uh, a minor, I think, is, is a word that interferes with really what this permit's all about when you look at the, the residents here, the owners the homeowners that live here in Arabian Circle and Palomino, we, we would consider this as a major uh, use permit. And, and I would hope that you would look at this permit from our viewpoint, not so much the counties. I know you've got a lot going on, but this is real important, and it's a major decision, a major use permit change that we disagree with. We don't want it. And a couple of the comments. One is... Um, Home density is the major problem with wildfire. I'm a wildfire consultant. And uh, basically what you're doing here with that small lot is you're expanding out the home density. You're um, getting to the point to where if there's too many homes, they burn home to home, home to home. And it's, uh, it's starting off with adding additional structures and I think that's uh, not going in the right direction. Um, with the two, two and a half acres, we have uh, plenty of, of green belt areas and it. Oh, shoot, what did I do? Sorry. Uh, Mr. Owen, we're sorry. It looks like we need to have you call back in. Yes. Sorry that's about my, that. My mistake. He's talking about home density. Correct. Yes. 
Mr. Bellman, can you hear us on the feed? Um, <coughs> your phone line was cut off. Could you either unmute your computer phone, your computer microphone, or call back in? What's that? We were able to hear him on his phone, but not on his computer. Yeah, Mr. Bowman, we were able to hear you on the phone, but we don't hear you on the computer. How about we close a public hearing, bring it back to the commission, and if Mr. Bowman comes in, we'll open the public hearing again. So bring it back to the commission. Okay. I think uh, Mr. Moss had some questions or comments. Um, Delaney, in, in the Arabian Circle subdivision, are there CCNRs? Um, not that I'm aware of. I know the private road maintenance agreement is, it exists. It's a, a, the agreement I saw was from 1975, and these lots have all been kind of divided out over time to the 2.3. Okay. Um, county rules and regulations, do they limit the number of guests any of the other residents can have on Arabian Circle? Uh, no. I mean, private parties, private events are not something we have uh, restrictions on. You know, in this case, um, the 15 person care home, again, we're, we're using the minor use permit as a tool to analyze the, the proposed use. Okay, so in absence of CCNRs or anything else, nobody else on that street has any restrictions on them or their guests as to where they can travel up and down that road easement? Yeah, so as far as, uh, it's a private road and utility easement, so that's the purpose of that, that access point. Again, I don't think we have any restriction on pedestrian or equestrian use of that road. Okay. Um, um, thank you. Then, so the other question would be, is there any limitation size-wise for any other residents in there if they wish to sell their home or to remodel their home and add to it? Um, yeah, so in this case on these RA B100 zone district, the um, allowable lot coverage is 35%. So you look at 35% of a, for instance, 2.3 acre parcel. In this case, with the combined square footage, we're a little over 12,000, maybe close to 13,000 square foot of the overall site, and that's only 17% of the site coverage. And in any case, other properties in this immediate area would have the same right to develop 35% of the site, given setbacks and other restrictions. Okay, thank you. So then, um, I guess then the other question, so state law, not county ordinance or anything else, but state law says... Any individual in a single family residence can open up six beds and require no discretionary permission from any local jurisdiction. Is that correct? That is a use by right, correct. Okay, so in, in my mind, just trying to simplify things, what we're talking about here isn't the size of the structure. We're not talking about lighting, landscaping, or anything else. We're talking about nine beds because they can come in and do everything here they're wanting to do and we could not require them to make any improvements to Arabian Circle. We could not require them to make any improvements to um, Douglas Boulevard. We would just have to sit back and watch and have zero input at all. For them wanting a few more beds, all this fat pile of conditions gets to be placed on them for the benefit of their neighbors and the traffic on Douglas Boulevard. Correct. Okay, so but but really, that's the issue. What we're talking about the the size of the building is 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 not. I mean, we, we really boils down to nine beds. Correct. So the the structure itself, uh, like I mentioned before, meets the development standards setbacks in the RA zone district, as well as the Granite Bay Community Plan setback off of Douglas. The square footage is within the allowable site coverage. So from that perspective, if this came in as a building permit without the use attached to it, if it was a single family dwelling of ten thousand four hundred square feet it would be allowed through building permit. Okay, okay. So I guess in, in, in my thoughts, 
I have heard very few comments, if any really, that relate to the occupancy of, of the facility. I've heard comments relating to the size of the structure, uh, whether the architectural design is appropriate, and all that. But I haven't really heard anybody distinguish terribly the difference between six and nine and recognize any of the exchanges that have been made in, in, in order to get those additional bits. Um, and, and I think that needs to be recognized and, and, and put into perspective here. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention is I have actually, I made a call to South Placer Fire and talked to uh, somebody fairly high up the food chain, and, and this meets their requirements, and they are prepared to serve it. Um, I appreciate those people who worry about what the fire department is capable of handling, but I've said it over and over again, they're not a bashful group. If they've got issues, they speak and they speak loudly. It takes, it takes meeting their conditions in order to get a permit. Without their approval, nothing's going to happen regardless of what we approve here. The design has to meet their criteria. Correct. So South Plaster Fire has, you know, been in this process from the beginning. They were um, part of the M&D review, environmental review. So they've had opportunities to review this from the get-go, provide, uh, you know, proposed changes and comments. They've also provided us a Wilson letter. So. so, And then the length of, of, of the road, I think, especially since the proposed project is at the beginning of it, is really irrelevant also. Um, it was built according to the Subdivision Map Act at the time the subdivision was built, and things have maybe changed, but that it doesn't, it doesn't really reflect anything pertinent to this project. Um, so I, I, like I say, I just, I, my, my issue, my review of this relates to the difference between, you know, the six that they can do with, with, nothing more than a ministerial approval versus 15 where they get an extensive pile of conditions put on them, um, as some of which I actually think are too extensive, like not letting a resident and family go out for a walk on a nice driveway when everybody else on the street is afforded that same luxury. Yeah, I think that item addressing the zoning administrator, it kind of came down to a compromise of uh, ensuring safety on that private road. However, the way that the project is designed, um, they did provide a courtyard, and with the acreage of the site, there is ample room for the, the residents of that care home to, to use the property. And it's quite likely that nobody will be in a, a position to go on that right. walk. But if the opportunity is there to to put restrictions on the residents that aren't on all the other residents to me seems not appropriate. But I think the the improved site the distance um, onto Douglas Boulevard off of Arabian Circle is a is a huge benefit for everybody who comes on and off of Arabian Circle onto Douglas Boulevard. Um, at six beds, they don't get that. Um, and, and um, the parking, the turnaround, for all that. I mean, they, the fire department wouldn't even really get a say so yeah. on their conditions at six beds. Um, I think by them asking for a few more um, puts the county in a unique position of adding some conditions for the benefit of the neighborhood and that, and I think you've done well. Thank you. Is Mr. Bowman back? No. We don't have Mr. Bowman back. No. So. Uh, question and a comment. Uh, but I'd first like to say that uh, Commissioner Moss has a long previous history with South Placer Fire, so he speaks from a, a point of experience. So I appreciate his points of view on the subject of fire mm -hmm. and the availability of services for that, uh, emergency services. Um, I have a question on, I know we just talked about it briefly, or at least uh, Jeff brought it up, uh, condition of approval 48. Uh, apparently there's a little uh, difference of opinion on that, of what uh, the zoning administrator agreed to and while the language actually turned out. 
And I'm wondering if uh, there could be a compromise on that language that maybe the community would be a little bit more receptive to. Um, I appreciate Commissioner Moss's viewpoint on this, but maybe as, this, as a compromise of saying that um, that other than vehicle access, whether it's egress or um, uh, ingress or egress, that there would not be any other um, access on that road by the residents or visitors to that property. Something that, something that would, I guess, be a little bit more involving than just exercising. So I, I'm just throwing that idea out that maybe that language should be a little more uh, general than specific. Yeah, I, I think that when the condition was stated in the hearing, um, they were correct in stating that George had said the residents are not to go on Arabian Circle. Mm -hmm. um, after the hearing, when we go to modify conditions, we get those conditions reviewed before we make them official conditions. Once George had a second to review it, he said that was not my intent to say they, they can't go on it, meaning, as you were saying, we don't want to say they can't ever leave in a vehicle or they can't ever leave the premises um, for a medical appointment or something of that nature. So we wanted to be careful, and that's why we use the term exercising to be specific to them walking or using the road as a, a form of uh, physical activity. That's why I said uh, whether it if it was just related to vehicle access, right. then that, that's that acceptable, might. but the rest would not be acceptable. Right. I'm just trying to find some language. Yeah, that if might we need to modify that. I think there could be clarity in that condition. Um, and my comments are, is to this type of facility, uh, having parents that have gone through uh, various care facilities, uh, both large and small, I find that these smaller facilities are much more attentive in caring for the patients. Um, and so I want to encourage them wherever we can because I believe that it's a better form of care for our parents as they age. And as we age, unfortunately, uh, us baby boomers are all getting older and uh, we're, we may be at some point have to be looking at these kind of facilities for ourselves. So uh, I'm, I would be... If, if I do come to that point, I'm going to be looking for a small facility. These larger corporate facilities are much more of a mill kind of operation that just does, doesn't really show the care that these kind of smaller operations do. I understand that they have to be, uh, they have to have the right fit for the community, but uh, we should be doing everything we can to help encourage these kind of facilities. That's my opinion. All right. Uh, other commissioners? Uh... Any comments? I have some, but if there's a... What about the applicant? Well, let's go through the commission, and then we can talk to the applicant first. Let's go through the commission, and then we can go back. May I? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think there is a... I think I had some similar questions as my colleagues here. Um, in addition to that, I think... Uh, did, did we... I, I guess this new resident that purchased a property, I'm interested to understand maybe our obligation, either in escrow, making sure they're notified. Um, did, did we do what we needed to do so that they had access, or, or did we not? Um, my understanding is our mailings go out to uh, properties within 300 feet. Um, I believe our mailings come from county, uh, you know, addresses that we have on file through, is it the assessor's office, Sue, might know a and little I, more. Yeah, I'm not sure how frequently those addresses are inserted into our GIS system. Mm -hmm. I can double check yeah. how frequently okay. that happens. So yeah, yeah that I think is something we can look into as far as how uh, frequently those addresses get updated when there is change of ownership in our GIS. The, the noticing requirement is uh, what is um, on the most recent assessment role. So uh, depending on when okay. they moved, they may not have been on the most uh, recent assessment roll. So it would have gone to the, I guess, the, the prior owners instead of and, the And I know the there owners. were other published locations uh, of this. So I just wanted to check in on that. Um, yeah. That's a disclosure issue. Mm -hmm. That's a disclosure issue that should have been up, brought up during the escrow. So that's really a yeah. seller. That's a seller buyer issue, yeah. not our An agent, yeah. Um, also... Um, I think a question about 
uh, driving patients does get to the fact about nine additional beds for this facility. So I'm, I'm interested, uh, is there any determination on that uh, from, from either staff or the developer to, to indicate anything about driving patients at all or residents? Um, I might refer to the owner and operators for okay. their specific uh, business details in that nature. Okay, and that, that's it for me. Okay. Um, we can, let's, we'll go, go back to Try. the applicant and have been to answer questions. Um, Sam, did you have any questions or comments? Um, not at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. And um, Larry. <laughs> Larry, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, you're, you're muted, Larry. I just said no. Oh, no, okay. All right, I have a couple of just clarifications. It kept throughout the uh, comments that this was referred to as a commercial facility. Could tell me about the county's definition of commercial and residential? Yeah, in this case, uh, the property is zoned residential agriculture combining minimum build site 100,000 square feet. In our zoning ordinance, a residential care home does fall under residential uses. So we are looking at this as uh, an allowed use in a residential zone for the RA zone district and that the use itself is residential in nature. Okay. Second of all, under the minor use permit, is there a capacity or a limit on the number of beds? Um, the way our zoning ordinance writes about these care homes is that we have a provision for six and fewer or seven or greater. So in this case, this 15 bed home falls into that seven or greater category. Now they could have requested additional beds and we would have had a look at that impact. Being the case that it's only 15 beds, we again drew the same conclusions. A six person care home would be allowed by right. An ADU, a JADU and a single family dwelling, again, allowed by right. This increased to nine additional beds. Um, again, looking at at the environmental review through the MND, we felt everything was reduced down to less than significant with mitigation and conditions. Okay. And the comment came up about future uses of the facility. Uh, I'm going to assume that if there's a future use that is not a care facility, then uh, the use permit would need to be modified. Is that correct? Yeah, so use permit would need to be modified. Um, there are, you know, pretty limited available uses in the RA zone district that this could be converted into. So if a use beyond what's allowed in an RA zone district is proposed at any time, it may even require something like a rezone, which would have to go in front of the board. All right. And then last, there was a discussion of the fence line and the placement of the fence. Could you discuss that? Yes. I, I want to say it's condition 18. Um, the, there is an existing uh, fence and they are proposing to update the fencing. The existing fence is actually right along Arabian Circle. It's your um, kind of s standard open white fencing. They're proposing to increase the fencing to like a wrought iron open style fencing. So we requested with the a new fence that it be relocated out of the right of way or out of that easement. So I believe the existing fence has been there for quite some time. Um, but with the proposed improvement plans, we will be ensuring that the new fencing that's proposed uh, will be out of the road easement. All right. And I think with that, then, uh, if the applicants, the contunas, uh, could uh, answer any of the questions that came up, and I think one of them was uh, the number of vehicles that are anticipated due to the additional nine beds. So um, with the employee that will have will be only two or three per shift. So it will be two or three cars that you see additional to our cars. Um, uh, for the visitors will be also very limited amount because we've been in this business and for 26 years and the visitors we have at this point are probably two or three per week because this population is the aging population and um, most of them have, are forgetful and they don't remember. Visitors are less and less. So I don't see any increased traffic like we have with our neighbor across the street at the vet clinic. It's not a business where people are coming and going. I think they plan their visits ahead so 
I, I don't see any impact on the traffic from this point. We are not a medical facility, so most of the residents will be DNR. medically stable or DNR or on hospice. Hospice means that we don't have to call 911. It will be only the nurse that will come and visit once a week. I'm also a nurse that will uh, pretty much keep in touch with the doctors and the hospice. So um, that's pretty much what I have to say regarding traffic. I don't see any traffic impact at all. And also we can do additional parks by the bar, maybe up to 10, maybe more, if it's necessary for any our vehicle to keep them on the back. And I want to mention, no delivery trucks will be, and only the garbage truck and maybe small uh, Amazon or maybe FedEx. But usually we'll do all the shopping and everything is going to be on small scale. It's not going to be commercial anything. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Yeah, I, I, nope. I'm still okay. puzzling about uh, number 48. All right. <clears throat> And I guess uh, what I'm wondering is, I think we're talking about people with dementia. And so I, I guess the concern is that if they're struggling with dementia, that maybe you don't want them out on the road or walking around. Um, but, but at any rate, um, I guess, first of all, does the state have some requirements for security of People that have dementia? That would be one question. And I guess they probably do. You'd have to have some kind of security so they don't get lost. But then the other thing is about exercising, and that's kind of a broad term. You know, I mean, you, walking could be exercising, jogging could be exercising, jumping jacks could be exercising. And so I guess what bothers me is like we were talking uh, you know other people in that neighborhood can get out in the road all they want and walk around but if one of the people from this facility gets out on the road then that's means that the, there's going to be a complaint filed with the county and i guess ultimately it could lead to a review of the whole use permit and i guess to me that seems a little bit excessive and, uh, you know, hopefully when the state licensing deals with this, that they do provide for the security to make sure the people uh, have a place in like the, in the yard in the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, that there's a way to keep them in, in the house and off the road. And so, at any rate, to me, I guess number 48 seems a little bit heavy handed. I kind of agree with Jeff on that in that, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like taking your rights away. And, yeah. and then uh, if it results in a complaint that has to come back to the county to deal with, it, with the use permit, then that's pretty heavy-handed. So that's kind of my thought. Yeah, I'll just address a few of your points there. Um, as far as the requirements for security, that is dealt with. So part of the licensing, state licensing requirement for dementia care is they have to meet those kind of security, uh, secure doors, those kinds of things specific to the building. Um, however, in this case, I just want to note that the entire property is going to be completely fenced, as well as both driveway entrance and exits are gated. So there is designated courtyard area for the residents, as well as other areas on the property, such as the barn. I know the um, operators have also talked about, like, if they have chickens or dogs on the property to help with um, the residential care um, patients to interact with um, other areas on the property. And I think the idea when this condition got added in the hearing at the zoning administrator hearing, the idea was to um, address the safety concerns or liability concerns of, of these uh, patients, particularly walking and or wandering off site and being on that private road. So again, that, that condition was made in the hearing, so if that's something we want to modify or clarify, I think it's yeah. something we can do. Okay, well, I think we probably need to discuss that one. <clears throat> okay, I, I would agree with you. I think that's heavy-handed, and we should not use uh, Condition 48. I think that should be removed. Okay. Other comments? I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, if, if I was, was a resident at a facility such as this, and my family came to visit to be able to take me for a walk, 
outside of the grounds where I'm restricted to the rest of my life would probably be a big point in my day, so to speak. I mean, just, and it, there is nothing restricting any pedestrian walking down Douglas Boulevard from making the turn onto Arabian Circle and walking up and down the full length of it at all. Right. And so to restrict somebody who currently has the rights to do so, I think is 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 an extreme in the name of liability. It's 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 over overkill. Um, County Council, I guess we could drop forty eight if we wanted to do that, but it's not a problem, right? <coughs> okay. If the commission wants to, it can certainly remove commission condition forty eight. Um, I, I think it's important that. I know the commissioners view it this way. Uh, this we're not they're not asking for a variance here. Uh, this is a right that they have. And uh, that's what it really comes down to for us. I mean, um, so um, to deny them that opportunity, um, they're, you know, is it's not something that's within our ability to do that. I mean, if we're being fair and honest with uh, with people, what they can do with their property. So that's my viewpoint. Well, in, in, I mean, a number of people said that we're, we're not following the law, but the, the law is what we're reviewing here, right. and we are in compliance with the law. And if somebody doesn't like that, actually, instead of coming at this point with a, a request to deny, you need to go back and take a look at the county codes and ordinances and modify those appropriately. Uh, we have reviewed this stack of information, and I've reviewed it against the uh, general plan, the codes and ordinances, and I see that it's in compliance with all of those. And our job as a commission is to review for compliance with the county's code and ordinances, and I see that they have. So that's where I'm at. Could you put the recommendation back up? Okay, I uh, would go ahead and move that we uh, deny the appeal of the uh, third party appeal. Second. We have a first and a second. I have a first from Mr. Nader, a second from Mr. Moss. So I, a vote for Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Moss. Yes. Mr. Nader. Yes. Mr. Herzog. Yes. Mr. Sevison. Yes. And Mr. Haugie. Yes. Thank you. I would further move that we uphold the zoning administrator's decision to approve the minor use of permit PLN 19-00275 uh, supported by the findings and recommendation of conditions of approval stated in the staff report other than we're going to modify that and adopt the, the prepared uh, negative, uh, mitigated negative declaration with uh, the provision that we are going to drop uh, condition of approval 48. We have a first and a second. I have a first from Mr. Nader, a second from Mr. Moss. So a vote for Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Moss. Yes. Mr. Nader. Yes. Mr. Herzog. Yes. Mr. Sevison. Yes. Mr. Haugie. Yes. Thank you. The decision of the Planning Commission may be appealed by anyone who appeared at today's hearing and provided comment or anyone that submitted written comments on this item. An appeal must be filed within 10 days of today's date and shall be accompanied by a filing fee of $619. And with that, I believe that concludes the agenda and I close the hearing or the meeting. Thank you.